Wednesday. Number two in the land, 4-0 Miami taking on the 1-3 Mountaineers of West Virginia. And welcome to the big building in Little Havana, the Orange Bowl in Miami, where Larry Coker's never lost. Tonight, if he wins, he'll be 29-1. Record-type stuff. Coker continues his success. On the opposite side, third year at West Virginia, Rich Rodriguez played for the legendary Don Nealon in Morgantown, a West Virginia alum. Very young team running their spread offense, trying to spread them out and run at the Canes and gain some success here tonight. One thing Rich told us this morning over a cup of coffee that he's worried about is the humidity. Temperature's 81 degrees. In South Florida, there's always a chance of a thunderstorm, but the humidity's up in the mid-80s, and why Rich is concerned, his team is young, and if he has to use a lot of that depth, the second teamers that he may use are nowhere near the ability of the Miami guys. So even if they stay close for a half, Rich is very concerned about how the humidity might have an impact here tonight. Mike Tirico, Lee Corso, Kirk Herbstreit, Dr. Jerry Punch. Glad you are on board for College Football Thursday. And as the guys were talking about in the studio, we begin the month of March, the month where you have settling in and movement in college football. Miami, one of the 14 in Division 1A, 10 in the BCS conferences that are undefeated as we head into the second full month of the season. Miami tested only by Florida, coming back from down 23 here to win 38-33. We saw them against Louisiana Tech pull away in Shreveport. They've defeated East Carolina on ESPN2 and Boston College on one of our Saturday night primetime games up in Chestnut Hill. Miami won the toss, and we are positive that they have deferred to the <laughs> second half because the official John Smith made the correct motion. So the Canes in green set to kick to the Mountaineers in white, and off we go on College Football Thursday. And two yards deep, some hesitation. Adam Jones brings it out, and he's knocked down at the 16-yard line. So a long drive will start from inside the 20. Tavares Gooden in on the tackle. There is the junior quarterback for the Mountaineers. Rashid Marshall, who started last year and was effective. What do you think of him, Lee? Rashid Marshall is an excellent all around athlete. He can run and throw. He has to have a hot game tonight, Kirk and Mike, to keep in the ball game so that they can use ball control offense and move the sticks and keep Miami's offense on the sideline. Rashid Marshall, key player tonight. Needs a good start, too. Yes. He's coming off a couple of tough games. Needs to get some confidence early in this football game. Opening drive starts from the 17. Vince Wolfork made an early visit on into the Miami back the West Virginia backfield. An early penalty for probably Miami, unless Wolfork was induced in there. Prior to the snap, offsides, defense, five yard penalty, remains first down. It's one way to slow down an aggressive defense. Try to get the big fella leaning. I think that's a very important offensive weapon people don't use enough. It's called a hard count, which makes it boom and makes those guys that are trying to get to the quarterback jump off the side. I think it's a good yep. weapon. And Marshall actually under center calling the cadence, something that is a little bit different for West Virginia. First down run with Quincy Wilson, who loves to spin, gets across the 25 into the 26. Four yards for the senior from the state of West Virginia, Sean Taylor in on the tackle. On the Bud Light starting lineups, Wilson's the son of former Chicago Bears linebacker Otis Wilson. The tight ends haven't caught a ball all year for West Virginia. Chris Henry, three catches, all touchdowns. Miquel Henderson rounds out their receiving core. Up front, this is the fifth game, fifth different combo on the offensive line. Right guard Jeremy Sheffy, one of two redshirt freshmen in there tonight. This is his first start. Second and one, Marshall option with Wilson. Goes down across the 31 and to the 32-yard line. We move over to the other side and pick up the Miami defense. Brian Pata, the freshman, gets his first college start in for the injured Baraka Atkins. Vince Wolfork has overcome a lot to become one of the best defensive tackles in the country. D.J. Williams, Mel Kuyper, says he's the second-best senior in the nation. Vilma is the leader of this group. Al Marshall steps into the starting lineup, replacing Kellen Jennings in a starting corner. If there's a better free safety than Sean Taylor, I look to watch, I look forward <laughs> to watching that guy play in person. Taylor is nothing short of a sensational athlete. Again under center, again a run with Wilson. Right at the line for a first down. It was Maurice Sykes, the strong safety, who pulled him down by the neck. But a strong run game early on here for the Mountaineers. 
if, if you notice, Rashid Marshall made an automatic call, Kurt. What he did is he saw the bubble in the middle and ran right at the Miami defense. That's a nice automatic call by the quarterback. And a nice automatic call, not to mention that Maurice Sykes was coming in at a four angle. He was lucky to get a hand on there to slow down Wilson. Wilson's a powerful runner who can break that tackle. Second in the yard. Wilson will get his fourth carry and has the first down and more across midfield and two the 46 yard line. So let's go right back to the beginning. Jerry Punch asked Larry Coker if he was concerned because of West Virginia has done running the ball against Miami the last two years. And thus far, we've seen four runs for 32 yards from Wilson. Well, you know it's coming. West Virginia, is, it's no secret. They want to be able to run the football. What I like is four different plays, four different formations. They're trying to show Miami a lot of things to make this defense think. And here comes the fifth play and a fifth different formation. With a new tailback in K.J. Harris out of Tampa, Florida. Marshall looks over to the sidelines, gets the play adjustment from Rich Rodriguez, the head coach. Freeze call there to try to get him. And here is Harris working the left side. Took a couple of first down yards. D.J. Williams, the senior, made the tackle. The pickup of three. Rich Rodriguez's team, 363 at home against Miami, 193 in a game here that we had where they hung in it in 2001. Rich Rodriguez told me an interesting thing last night. He told me that psychologically they had a great victory last year. They made Kirk, they made Miami put eight in the box. First time he's ever seen put Miami put eight in the box. Well, nobody, nobody <laughs> does that because Miami likes to keep the two safeties deep. Yeah. He also told us that tempo and getting first downs is the key to that soccer. Fumble the football. It's free, and Miami gets it. Nobody knew the ball was on the ground, and Jonathan Vilma comes up with the recovery. So I believe the first time they went shotgun, unable to work the handoff, and it laid on the ground for a long time until the Canes recovered. Interesting also, though, I think it's Jason Colson, number 24, fumbles the ball. He hasn't been in the ball game at all. I don't understand why they took Quincy Wilson out of the ball game doing too well, Kurt. Uh, they like to rotate the backs to try to keep them fresh. I'm, I'm with you. Wilson was on a little bit of a okay. roll there. Maybe he had to step out for a second uh, to be able to catch his breath because that's an important thing mm. is rotating the West Virginia's players as much as possible. But, boy, had a nice drive oh. going there. Don't need to help Miami. 53 yards of field to work for a touchdown. Quarterback Brock Berlin. It's the running back, Frank Gore, gets three to midfield. Well, we talked about Brock Bruin so much in the first two weeks. From Shreveport, Louisiana, played his first game there. <laughs> Former U University of Florida quarterback, played the Gators in the second game. What's happened to him since then, Kurt? I think he is a much more confident quarterback. I, I think people talk about the Florida game as his turning point. I think just getting the game at Shreveport, his hometown, out of the way, and then playing his former school, Florida, getting those two games out of the way, surviving it, playing so well against Florida, now has him playing with more confidence, but he still has to continue to develop in this offense. Second and seven, three in the pattern. He throws complete to Kevin Beard, the senior wide receiver, back off the knee injury, suffered against Pittsburgh last year, picked up six. We've got third and about a yard and a half. Beard joins a freshman, Ryan Moore, his excellent receivers there on the right side of your Bud Light starting lines. Kellen Winslow, Jr., the tight end of the middle. Only one touchdown catch in four games. And Frank Gore getting closer to his old great form. Offensive line up front, Mel Kuyper's first list of rating seniors. To Vernon Carey, the senior left guard, sixth best senior in the nation. And the converted tight end, Winston, the sophomore out of Midland, Texas, has a chance to be a great offensive lineman down the line. Third and one, Gore tried to run wide, and West Virginia got on the other side of the line of scrimmage. Adam Jones starting tonight at quarterback got in there. A loss of three, and Miami will go three and out on its opening drive. Well, we talk about loading the box. It's third and one. Look at how many bodies West Virginia decides to put up there. They put one corner out on Ryan Moore and ten defenders up in the box. I know Miami's offensive line is pretty good, but it's tough to block ten guys up there. Ryan Monroe set to kick it away for the Kane. Try to pin the Mountaineers deep. Got a nice bounce, but it was... Uh, Unable to be brought in by Antrell Roll, a touchback. The net only 27 after the 47-yard kick. The turnover cost West Virginia nothing but field position.
Back here at the Orange Bowl in Miami. Number two Miami and West Virginia scoreless. Mountaineers to start it from the 20. Lee, let's take your Under Armour advantage for tonight for both teams. Well, it's perfect in the first drive for West Virginia. Run the football from the spread offense, get the game close into the fourth quarter, and see what happens. On Miami's side, they have been wonderful. Balanced offense, seven running touchdowns, six touchdowns by the pass, and seven non-offensive or defensive touchdowns, excuse me, and one safety. Mm -hmm. Very, very balanced football team. They've scored a lot, not on the field offensively. 20 touchdowns this year. Mm. 13 from the offense, seven from defense or special teams. Drive start from the 20. Here's Marshall's pass to Chris Henry. He gains uh, about four yards to the 24. It's the first time Henry has caught a ball this year that hasn't gone for a touchdown. It's good to see Rashid Marshall getting off to a good start. I know they had to miscue with the fumble, but the last two games, you look at the numbers, and against Cincinnati, 10 of 30, and how about against Maryland, where the West Virginia team just didn't show up to play in that football game. It's not just Rashid Marshall. He's the strength as an offense breaking in so many new people that's trying to gain some confidence the sheet is and the players around him. Second and four. Wilson lost the football. It's been kicked around a few times and we'll see who's at the bottom of the pile. Jonathan Vilma might have knocked it away. He's sure Miami has it and they do. So West Virginia, which has lost three fumbles all year, has lost two in the first seven plays tonight. This is a big part of Miami Hurricane football, creating turnovers. Mike, you're right. Vilma got in there with a the left forearm to knock the ball loose. And Miami's opportunistic once again, creating turnovers. Already their 13th on the season. That's something that two years ago on their way to a national championship, that was the strength of the defense. And right now, you look at this Miami defense, that is something that they want to live by. The freshman Brian Potter getting the start as the defensive end came up with the recovery. First and 10, pressure on the Mountaineer defense. Four sent out in the pattern. Burlings throws deflected and it's intercepted. So West Virginia gets the turnover right back. Lenort made the deflection. And Leandre Washington comes up with the INT. Adam Lenort, number 10, is six foot three. 235 pounds and that's why he got this interception watch him Kirk and Mike as he extends his body right here number 10 notice he's watching the quarterback yeah. and he jumps up boom and I tell you what I noticed one thing about Berlin already he bird dogs boy he, he is looking exactly where he's going to throw the football no question in my mind well that's the same thing he did the last time we had him against Louisiana Tech they said that that's the area they're trying to improve mm -hmm. his game is seeing looking into the defense but that time he looked to Kellen Winslow from the time he dropped back to throw the ball and Lenore did a nice job of reading his eyes deflecting it and West Virginia gets the ball right back and the defense comes back right away as Orrin Harris comes up on first down to make a stick. A carry that will lose a yard. Lots of turnovers early. First dozen plays, three turnovers. And that quick start the Mountaineers hoped for. Looked like it was going there in that first drive, but back-to-back -back snaps, they fumble the ball. It's not very good. Or two out of three snaps, I should say. Second and 11 out of the gun with Jason Colson back in there in the backfield. And the pass is dropped. And I'm sure Chris Henry heard John Vilma and DJ Williams lurking behind each ear. Third and 11 coming up. Getting back to Brock Berlin, guys. This is going to be a, a, a thing to watch with the Miami offense because miscues have really hurt him over the course of these first four games. He had the great second half against Florida, but until they prove consistently that they can throw the football, teams are going to try to take away Frank Gore and make Brock Berlin beat him by throwing the ball. Miami's been great on third down. One reason, it's been a lot of third and long this year. Third and 11, needing to get to the 31. Swing it out to Wilson, and Quincy's pushed out at the 23. You have to be careful that it wasn't a late hit out of bounds. Kelly Jennings, the nickelback, is over there, but he let go in time, and West Virginia is going to have to kick it away. West Virginia's punting unit had one block early against Wisconsin, and since then, their kicker, Todd James, a senior, is a pretty good kicker. Went to Joe, Mont uh, Joe Montana's high school, Ringgold High School in Pennsylvania. He now does the rugby-style punt at times, run around and kick it. 
You better be worth watching the parishes back there, Andy. Watch out. See, he gets it away at about yeah. the same time that you get away a normal snap. 1.9 seconds, but unreturnable where it was kicked. 38 yard punt with no return. They'll, They'll take, take that, that net all night. <laughs> <laughs> ESPN's College Football Thursday. Brought to you by Olive Garden. Where great Italian food tells you when you're here, your family. And by Mentos, the fresh maker. Cast your vote for the Mentos Game Maker Moment of the Week at ESPN.com. Keyword Mentos. One punt, three turnovers in the first four drives. 8.50 left, no score. Miami turned it over with Brock Berlin's sixth interception on the year. He's thrown for five touchdowns. But uh, Berlin continues to show signs of settling in and then make mistakes that has some people a little worried about this Miami offense thus far. Drive start from the 40. And Frank Gore touched a couple of times behind the line, still squirms forward the three yards to the 43. Second and seven coming up. You can see West Virginia putting eight guys up at the line of scrimmage. Now watch this throw by Berlin going back to the last interception. When he drops back to throw, he's looking at Kellen Winslow the whole time. Lenore blocks, blasts it down, but look right here at Lorello. Even if he is back there not to be able to have that ball batted down, Lorello still is there to make the interception. There are four defenders locked in on Kellen Winslow. Not the first time the Kings have seen that this year. Second and seven. Miami had two men in motion at the same time. This play will come back. We'll have second and 12 coming up. Well, so far, West Virginia's got one psychological thing going for them. This is the first time Miami hasn't scored a touchdown within 11 minutes and 23 seconds of the first quarter. That's right. So, so far. It's a win. I'm telling you, psychologically, that's keep keep them in the game. When I told you to be in the show, try to get them into a fourth quarter, put the pressure on them. Yeah, we hear that. The illegal shift on the offense. Five-yard penalty from the line of scrimmage. Complete second down. The thing that's scary about this Miami offense, Brock Berlin's ability is frightening, his physical ability. And because he's inexperienced, the light switch kind of comes and it goes. But Rob Chudzinski, the offensive coordinator, and Larry Coker, they're trying to have him play a more consistent game. But just when you think, boy, these guys are really struggling, yeah. boom, 60-yard touchdown. Still have the most explosive talent with all the ball handlers. Lynch was in the neutral zone. No flag is down. Hmm. Well, Lynch toss is caught and dropped. Incomplete intended for Jason Gathers, the senior. <laughs> Miami players kind of. I think they thought they had a free play. Yeah. Well, it'd be a good time to tell you about Ben Lynch, the junior from Oil City, Pennsylvania. He's part of a 3 3 5 defense. Bluford and Hunter on the ends. Lynch from Oil City, same as the middle linebacker, Adam Lenore, who had the deflection earlier. That's town about 10,000. And they got two stars on the same D1 team. Jericho's a walk on. Wiley's forced five fumbles. Ryan King was the starting corner. See the free safety number 11? He's moved in. Adam Jones gets the start. Frazier and Jones are good on the corners. King at free safety, a very good defensive back. So they have enough DBs to cover when Miami does this. Three wide and five in the pattern. It's third and about a dozen. Berlin's toss is caught and dropped by Gore. So Miami's dropped back-to-back -back balls, and the Canes offense off to a slow start in the OB tonight. When you have talented players like Gore dropping the football, that's lack of focus. Now, I don't care what you do during the week. If your football team comes in lack of focus like this against anybody, you've got big, big mm -hmm. problems. And right now, Miami is not playing with the intensity necessary to beat West Virginia or anybody else. Uh, definitely on one side of the ball. Oh, no question. Monroe punting a line drive, a getaway for the West Virginia folks. As it was bouncing, it will be stopped by the Canes at the 21-yard line. 41 yards on the punt. Well, it's college football weekend. As always, we'll begin with college game day in Austin, Texas this week at our ESPN College Football Saturday game. Tennessee, 4-0 at Auburn. Yes, they lost their first couple of games, but beware the Tigers. It's down on the plains in prime time, 7.45 Eastern, and available on ESPN HD, which is now available nationwide. College football on ESPN, every game a must win. I agree with you. I think Auburn has become a more focused team, and it seems like all the hype for the national championship, now they're locked in on trying to get to the SEC championship in Atlanta. Four drives for the Mountaineers. 
This is their best starting point for 21. And they'll be a couple of yards farther back as Wilson is brought down. Brian Potter again as the freshman as we have a flag down for the pushing well away from the play between Antrell Roll and West Virginia wide receiver D. Alston. I was watching them the whole time. Both were swinging at one another. It'll be interesting to see if it's the old get the, the last guy to take the swing, which was Antrell Roll. After the play went over, personal foul on the defense, yeah, personal foul on the offense, the penalties off that it will be second down. Second and long after the good penetration by Pata to stop up the running back. Well, uh, we mentioned the Tennessee game, that Auburn game on ESPN, then it against Georgia on ESPN2 the following Saturday night, and at Alabama, and then the Canes. They come in here November 8th. How's that October for you? At Auburn, Georgia, and at Alabama. Illegal substitution flag here. On the offense, five yard penalty. Confusion with the backs. The backs calm down. KJ Harrison, Quincy Wilson changing all those backs. And it will be Rich Rodriguez's team in second and second in 16. Not good against Miami <laughs> with that secondary and that pass rush. Marshall looks to throw this time. Puts it up for the rear end right caught by Harris. There's a flag down as KJ Harris pulls away. Takes it all the way to the three. 84 yards, and as I look back, I don't see any other any flags on the field. Here it is back at the 15, back at the line of scrimmage. Miami offside, I believe. I bet you it is. Miami offside, and West Virginia did a smart thing. They got a free play. Yep. Might as well go for it all. Offsides, defense, penalty will be declined. First down. Pass caught by Harris, 24-year-old junior college transfer. Or they're going to fake the handoff here, and he's just, Wilson's just going to slide down the sideline on a wheel route. Miami's faking and disguising the blitz, but in the meantime, they're not catching up with the man-to-man -man coverage. DJ Williams tries to stay with him. The ball is perfectly thrown to Wilson right over his shoulder. I'll tell you, I'm impressed with Wilson's speed, or rather Harris's speed down the sideline now. Tall receiver near side and Rayshon Bolden. They run right to the right side. Quincy Wilson pounds it in. Touchdown, not near. So West Virginia was backed up second in about 17. They hit the big play, and the son of former NFL linebacker with the Chicago Bears, Otis Wilson, watches his son score his fourth rushing touchdown on the year. And that Otis Wilson was a great football a player at the University of Louisville. In fact, he was the second best linebacker ever played there behind Tom Jackson, my linebacker. That's right. Right. Wilson, it. Cooper on for the extra point. He is true on the try, and... Well, if Miami was not focused, their attention has been grabbed by a West Virginia team who has run the ball effectively, turned it over twice, but hit the big play here to the junior out of Tampa, Florida, for a baseball player, K.J. Harris, on the wheel route from Rasheed Marshall, sets up the other running back, Quincy Wilson, for his fourth of the year, and West Virginia leads in the Orange Bowl. Back here at the Orange Bowl, pretty stunned crowd right now. They have watched West Virginia jump out to a 7-0 lead. The Mountaineers have 128 yards. Compared to Miami's nine. And we talked about building confidence early after the last couple games this offense has played. They've already put 128 yards of total offense up. And we have 628 to go in the first quarter. I guess safe to say they're playing with a little bit of a little swagger down there for the mountains also the other side is not playing with a whole lot of swagger no nope. you can see the sideline kind of walking around it is not the same miami hurricane team that i've seen in the past Brad cooper has a big leg darnell jenkins takes it from two yards deep and brings it out tries to hit the seam but he's brought down across the 20 well covered by west virginia jay henry 
And Harris over there on the tackle, return of about 22 yards. So K.J., who has a big play, makes the special teams tackle as well. Well, K.J. Harris, you know, is a junior college transfer, and what they did, they got him man for man on D.J. Williams, as Mike said, one of the fastest linebackers in the country, but the one-on-one -on -one coverage was a mismatch because K.J. just ran right by D.J. and touchdown and I'm telling you I said it before that play Miami is not focused for this football game I can sense it don't forget about that throw by Marshall Ooh. oh that was, was perfectly thrown right where it had to be right in scratch Winslow the lead blocker for Gore first deer across the 30 first down for Frank out at the 34 yard line Gore uh oh he's grabbing his leg here Frank Gore may have hurt his leg Gore right away was reaching for that left leg. Remember, Frank Gore tore two ligaments in his right knee last year in a game against Pittsburgh when he was the starting running back. Jarrett Payton, son of the uh, great running backs of all time, Walter Payton is the backup. He's getting set to check in, but all the concern for Miami now is with number 32. Let's go check in with Jerry Punch. And, Mike, uh, we mentioned the fact that the right knee was the one that they had total reconstruction on done last year with the ACL and the meniscus trim. He injured the left knee, the one that they're looking at right now, Scott McGonigal. Basically, it was a bruise of the patella, which is the kneecap, which is the area they're looking at right now. But they're actually examining it for ligaments right now. But he bruised the left knee, uh, the front of the left knee, against East Carolina and also sprained the right ankle. So he's been sort of nicked up the last week and a half or two weeks. And uh, now Scott McGonigal and company out there looking at Frank Gore. But it, as you said, it was the right knee that had the total reconstruction done back last year. Yeah. Jeez, you you hope Miami obviously hopes he's okay but for this kid as well who went through the rehab that Jerry talked about he doesn't want any help he wants to force his way off the field speaking of Frank Gore you know you guys he had over 4,000 yards rushing in his junior and senior year and scored 34 touchdowns his senior year in Dade County that's one of the best records ever in one of the best football counties in America great back what a player great back there. sometimes wonder some players they come back from a reconstructive surgery a little bit more tentative and take a little bit more time than other guys so I got rolled up on that play first down Berlin nice call fake throws to Jared Payton out of the backfield gets over to the 40-yard line you cannot help but wonder what's going through Frank Gore's mind now as the doctors make the evaluation and the examination on the bench remember this guy was the starting running back um, as he got hurt going into the 0-2 season it allowed Willis McGahee to come in and have his unbelievable season Gore had to go through the whole year on the scout team with Brock Berlin getting ready rehabbing rehabbing and finally getting back out on the field to start this 2003 season just getting close to the form that we had seen from him earlier on and now this injury meantime Peyton runs it inside for a couple of yards we'll have third down coming up let's go visit with Jared and we talk about the fact that when you have an ACL repair it's, it's a long hard road back but this young man had some contracture had some stricture some de diminished range of motion in that knee they had to go back in and clean it up a little bit he had to work doubly hard and this young man really really wanted to come back John Uribe the orthopedic surgeon that you see working on uh, uh, examining Frank Gore right now he's the man that does the work for the Miami Dolphins and the Miami Hurricanes one of the most notable here in the southeast when it comes to sports medicine but uh, he said he, he was impressed and he's seen a lot of people over the years had ACL surgery how hard this young man had to work after two procedures to get back on the playing field without an empty backfield Ryan Moore dropped the football I think one of his teammates may have bailed him out let's see Grant Wiley's at the bottom of the pile trying to shake it free both sides have said they have it and Joel Rodriguez the center is pushing with Leandre Washington they haven't signaled yet it is Miami ball Kevin McClee the redshirt freshman knocked it away and Larry Coakley's team lucky not to turn it over a second time Kellen Winslow came up with the recovery it's third and short this is a great job by Brock Berlin watch his head he wants to throw this ball to the right West Virginia back down and played zone great recognition by Berlin to come back and find Ryan Moore now they're lucky to recover the fumble but I'm gonna tell you that was a nice job a simple throw but a great read by Brock Berlin of looking into that defense 
Berlin looking to get in rhythm. Garrett Payton is met and won't go very far at all. He is Hunter with the defensive surge, the sophomore out of Burke, Virginia. And now a lot of pressure and performance level must fall on number 34, Peyton, as they continue to look at goal. And from a coach's standpoint, looking on the sideline, if I was West Virginia, I'm telling you, I'm going to win this ball game right now, I think, because I guarantee one thing, Peyton is no gore. And that's going to stop their running attack and force them into a one-dimensional game with Brock Berlin. And I think I got a shot to beat them if Brock Berlin well, has to throw the ball. Even if Frank Gore were in there, they, it's not like they were lighting it up. I still think they need to throw the football to get this defense to soften up. Blake Berlin took a shot. Good coverage by Brian King allows only a one-yard gain for the fullback Quadrin Hill. I think they need to throw the ball vertically on first and ten when West Virginia is putting nine guys up in the box to try to defend the run. Even if you miss, just to try to soften to let them know that they better respect the speed of your receivers. That's very sad to see it's Frank Gore being helped off in the locker room after everything he has been through. Of all the players on the Miami football team tonight, besides maybe Brock Berlin, that's the one guy they couldn't afford to lose, in my opinion. Not only for tonight, for the season. Anytime. Third and 11 here. They need to get to the 39 to keep the drive alive. Underneath more comes free. Can he run for it? Not near as well covered, and they'll have to make a decision here from the 42-yard line. Well, I think you got to punt the ball. I, I would not take a chance in giving them field position. Punt the ball, get them inside the 10, and force another turnover. That's what I do. You know what comes to mind, guys, is you see Gore, is what Larry Coker told us. Uh, and Rob Trudzinski, the offensive coordinator, Frank Gore had that kind of attitude, that smile going this week. Yeah. That you felt he was going to have a big game. And Coker told us he expected a big game from Frank tonight. Now, to watch this is just at your heart. Kick is away from Brian Monroe. Will this one be stopped inside the five? Yes. <laughs> It'll be stopped at the two and a half yard line. Well, it's terrific to be covered <laughs> by, as we said, if there's a better free safety in the country, I look forward to watching him play. Sean Taylor down there on the cover. Hunt 40, long field for the Mountaineers. Well, Sean Taylor is known as one of the best free safeties, but he's going to be a gunner here, and he's going to get down. Makes a little cut here. Now, look at him. Look for the football. That's a great job right there. You can use that as a clinic film. Looking up and finding the football. Don't worry about the, the, the uh, punt returner taking you out with some kind of decoy sign. Go down and find the ball and knock it back. And smart to keep it in the field of play. Long field down by the student section. Loud for Marshall and company. Quincy Wilson loves that spin move. That's his trademark. And look at him delivering the blow out to the nine-yard line. You don't see Miami defenders pushed the other way very often, but Quincy Wilson at 215 pounds, the power to pick up seven. We are joined tonight with aerial views of this beautiful city from the Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company. It's a fleet of airships. The blimp stars and stripes continuing a 78-year tradition as the aerial ambassador and icon of the 105-year-old company. Goodyear blimps in the building. Good it's a big shot. game tonight. Nice shot. ESPN, the blimp. Big time. You, you, Kurt, Kurt. you, Dr. Punt. Punt. Jerry Punt. Nice stop, of course. First team. Second down run by Wilson. First down and more. Look at Wilson over the sideline to the 25 and the 26. So West Virginia, for the third straight year, is running right at Miami and around them. And they've gained 152 yards in the first quarter, guys. Well, this is a great seal block by the tight end to be able to open this up and they were able to get to the outside which is very difficult to do right here watch the block Bailey gets not only the defensive end but he picks up McIntosh the outside linebacker and he's, he's able to get down to the outside to pick up valuable yards we're talking about Miami not playing with great effort and great attitude let's not forget to talk about West Virginia for a team coming in at one and three they are playing with tremendous attitude. Sometimes those yard numbers are skewed in the first quarter because of plays. West Virginia's run 16, Miami's run 14, so it's a pretty similar sample. Marshall must beat the play clock. They did. On the handoff, Jason Colson goes forward. Out near the 34-yard line. Pickup of seven, he two. A redshirt freshman. And don't forget, we'll go back to that quarterback, Rasheed Marshall. And that one long pass he had was 84 yards. That more than tripled Marshall's total passing yards last week of 25. 
more than tripled it. That wow. was an aberration to his career. Oh, just yeah. uh, not only Marshall not being in sync, but the whole offense. Uh, it's a rhythmic offense, and everybody wasn't quite hitting on all cylinders. They're making up for it right now. Second and three for the Mountaineers. And he's head down and picking up the first down. With a run of four yards. So it's been Harris and Wilson and Colson. That time KJ out of Tampa picked up the first down. And that'll uh, put West Virginia in great stead here as the quarter comes to an end. Let's get these names in there. Jeff Burke, Dan Moses, Ben Timmons, Jeremy Sheffy, Darren Justice, the offensive line that first quarter. Look at them sprinting down to the other end. This team is ready to play football tonight. Attitude means so much. <laughs> And after uh, being embarrassed at Maryland, losing 34-7, they come into the Orange Bowl and dominate the first quarter on the Canes. 7-0 Mountaineers. Call a friend. We've got a good one on College Football Thursday. A humid early October night in Miami. Temperature in the 80s, humidity high, and the angst level is high here, even though Ray Lewis... And uh, over 30 of the former Canes are strolling the sideline here for support. Miami's in a little bit of trouble. West Virginia's dominated the opening quarter. They've watched Frank Gore, their running back, come out of the game with an injury to his knee. First and 10 for West Virginia as this quarter starts from the 36. There's halfbacks in the game, and this is K.J. Harris at the big pass catch earlier, less than a yard. Brian Potter and John Square, the young ends, made the play. If you didn't know the difference. Flag down, holding on the mountain. If, if you didn't know the difference, you'd think the team in the white was Miami, a 28-point favorite. The team in the green was West Virginia, an underdog. Because of the mental attitude of the teams coming in here, West Virginia right now wants this game more than Miami. I'll forget the X's and O's. It's in the heart and the mind. I'm the offense. West Virginia's come into this game with an attitude. Forget about the pass. Forget about the one and three. They, they're, they're, they're out here playing fun and playing loose. I mean, it's uh, what surprises me is Miami. Miami's not a team usually that, that comes into a game uh, where they're mentally not there. But don't forget, we're in the second quarter, and the Miami defense, if they're going to turn this thing around, it's up to the Miami defense to create a turnover and to get this thing going. Not the Miami offense. They've created two already. And and I'm, talking pick six. I'm talking a big play. Marshall's going to run. Has some room, and this good runner got it back out near the original line of scrimmage at the 35. Vilma made the play. We have second and about 12 coming up. Well, Rich Rodriguez, the coach of this team, back at uh, Glenville State, an NAIA school in the state of West Virginia, started this spread offense concept. And when you think spread offense, you think throw the ball, throw it all over the map. Well, this West Virginia team has proven they can run out of the spread offense. And here's what they've done to Miami, jumping up 7-0 as we're a minute in second quarter. Marshall's with designed run for the quarterback who gets out of bounds. At about the 38-yard line, pick up a three. And you'll see that quite a bit tonight. That's one thing the teams try to do when they play Miami. Miami plays so much man under with their linebackers and their cornerbacks that if you have a quarterback who's athletic and can move, especially out of the spread offense, they try to take advantage of it. And that Rashid Marshall is a wonderful athlete. When he was at Valley Forge Military Academy, that kid played defense corner free safety intercepted passes i really like his confidence tonight kirk he doesn't even look like the same guy we saw on tapes last week third and eight miami blitz picked up by west virginia underneath it's complete but that will be short of the first down with henry henry is trying to find some space but sean taylor came up and sniffed that out and off the line came john square West Virginia will kick it away. Now, we mentioned earlier they do this rugby punt with Todd James because they had one blocked early. The problem is Miami knows it. If we know it, the Canes know it, too. They were prepared the first time. Kelly Jennings, number 22, nearly snuck in there from the right side and blocked that rugby punt last time. A game changer. Roscoe Parrish back to receive. They got that away really quick. 1.1 is great. The hang time is excellent. And no return. So the punter has done his job tonight. First, a 38-yard net punt. 
And that time as they continue to mark it and they'll mark it at the 30 yard line a 27 yarder with no return. James is doing his job when he punts it out of bounds. That's right. That's it. Want to go game track. Those yeah. of you might be surfing over here near the bottom of the hour. Show you what's happening in our first quarter. Plus, big play by West Virginia to KJ Harris out of the backfield. The wheel route set up the touchdown run of a couple of yards by Quincy Wilson and Frank Gore, the Miami star tailback, injured his other knee, not the knee he hurt last year. He was taken back to the locker room. No report yet. Brock Berlin to the air on first down. Throws high and nearly intercepted by Brian King. So Berlin was looking and looking, and King smelled the pick six. He just couldn't get to it. That's what I call bird dogging, the, the best picture of bird dogging so far. The quarterback comes back, and instead of looking off the coverage, he watches it, and then watch all of the defensive backs just watching his head. Now, Kirk, keep his, look at him, look at him. He's gonna throw there for sure, and now all the defensive backs run over there. Kirk, unless he changes that real quick, they're gonna have another couple of pickoffs. Right the problem, not only was he telegraphing oh. his throw, but he was also, he threw it to two West Virginia defensive backs. There was not an open receiver there. He's gotta try to throw that football away. Second and 10 for Jared Payton across the 30 and two. The 33 yard line, I'll give him four yards on the play. Now Jared Payton, the son of, as I mentioned before, the great NFL running back, Walter Payton, fifth year senior, a guy who's had to go through so much. When he arrived here, his dad was ill, and then as uh, so many of us know, he uh, passed away due to cancer related to that rare liver disease, but then had other different incidents, car accident, cut his foot on a piece of coral. Mm. So many different things happened that's kept him out of the lineup, mentally and physically not ready to play. This is last season. He came ready to play mentally and physically, and now may take on a far different role. Third and six, blitz underneath the All-America tight end Winslow. First down at the 42-yard line. Another son of one of the greats in NFL history in his position. Well, a rare blitz here from West Virginia. They've been able to defend in many cases by playing zone. This time they decide to blitz. Nobody picks up Kevin Winslow, which on third down, if there's one guy you want to keep an eye on, it's Kellen Winslow. This time, the eyes downfield. He knew right away that he had to get rid of it because nobody picked up the blitz, but he got it to 81 for the first down. You might want to, third and five, third and six, you might want to keep an eye on him. After Miami's third first down of the night, out of the gun, here's Berlin. Got five options underneath the Payton. Across the 45 and to the 49-yard line. Second and four coming up. Well, as mentioned earlier, college game day is going to Austin, Texas. 10.30 a.m. Eastern, 7.30 a.m. Pacific. Chris Lee and Kurt will bring you college game day. Built by the Home Depot before number 14, K-State at number 13, Texas. Can't wait to get down there. For more, you can log on to ESPN.com. Coach Fowler has his weekly uh, article there. It should be posted right about now. He's up. He's ready. He's up, and up there on the net. Kirk's got his transcript from his chat earlier this <laughs> afternoon. And Lee answers Lee now. Second down. Good. Start thrown by Berlin. The that same moves by Roscoe Powers across the 35. And to the 34, Anthony Mims made the tackle to pick up 17. I like getting the ball thrown downfield, and I think because he had so much time, West Virginia in many cases dropping seven or eight guys into coverage when Miami drops back to throw, he's going to have time to be able to throw the longer route. And West Virginia, I don't think, can stay with the speed of Miami, so you got to find those bubbles in that zone coverage. That's how you do a good job. And remember, playing against Brock Berlin, you've got to keep everything inside and force him to make a mistake. That's what I would do. Kyle Topia in there at the fullback spot. Berlin rolls and throws. Four Harris incomplete. Want a flag? Not going to get it. Coverage by Lance Frazier out of Delray Beach was good enough. And you know when these Florida kids have gone out of the state, come back to play the Knolls, the Gators, or the Canes, they have a little extra adrenaline pumping on game day or night. Lance Frazier is a three-year starter, one of the best defensive backs in the Big East. And Kirk, the reason why he made that good play is he came around with his right hand and didn't hold him with the left hand. That was a well-played play by Lance Frazier. Well, the football was thrown right on Perfect. time. Perfect, Perfect. throw. Perfect. And Frazier was all over, all over uh, Roscoe Parrish here. Heck of a play. 
Miami's best drive of the night. Second and ten. The screen to Peyton with people of luck and Vernon Carey clear the way. First down to the 22 yard line. So Carey, the left guard, and Joel Rodriguez, the center, were out there and paved the way for 34. That Vernon Carey, he's a great story. His nickname is The Hulk. I can't under why. 6'5, 330 pounds from Miami Northwestern High School. Good looking pro prospect. It's a great story, not only because of those dimensions, but also he's so versatile. He was penciled in at the beginning of the year to be the starting right tackle. Some injuries up front forced him to go back to the guard, left guard spot, and he is the anchor to that offensive line. Play eight of the drive from the West Virginia 22. A lot of passion. This looks like the Florida game there behind. They're then putting it up for grabs. Gavin's got free! I don't know if he's in the end zone. I think the ball, they say touchdown! Brock Berlin looks more comfortable in the shotgun. Remember the Florida game in the second half here. Plenty of time. And there are big, big open voids in that zone defense from West Virginia. And it looks like Miami has been able to find them on this drive. Hamilton marker down before John Petty's extra points. So Jason Gathers, who was limited by a hamstring, missed all of two a days. Now he is getting back to rhythm. Prior to snap, fast start, offense. So we'll have a re-kick coming up. Gather is able to go up and get it in that open space. As he was knocked oh. down, very hard to tell if the ball had crossed the plane and the officials waited and looked at each other and gave a sign Larry Coker was happy to see. Gathers is six foot three and he went up and caught the ball at the very height. And that's why he scored the touchdown over the smaller defensive backs from West Virginia. I think Berlin knows his receivers pretty well. He put that ball way up in the, in the air, <laughs> knowing that Gathers had not only the size, but the leaping ability to go up and catch it. And five yards farther back, the red shirt freshman Petty able to knock it through to square the game. Brock Berlin, five of seven on the drive, 66 yards and the touchdown to Gathers. Now the pressure goes back to Rashid Marshall in West Virginia. They have to answer the games to come back to tie it at seven. Miami back in it here as they've squared the game at seven. Still plenty of time. A third of the way through here tonight in the Orange Bowl. Rock Berlin throws to Jason Gathers, who was a receiver, then went to running back last year, returned back to wide receiver as the injuries uh, transpired. Uh, now, as an, on a night when a running back gets injured, he's back at wide receiver, goes up and makes the touchdown drive. Brian Monroe's kick is short. Can't do better than that. KJ Harris has wheels, as we've seen. It's a good field position start across the 27 yard line. Roger McIntosh with the tackle. Let's go check in with Dr. Jerry Punch. Guys, Larry Coker has just gotten information from the uh, Miami locker room. John Uribe has examined his star running back, Frank Gore, and he's officially being listed as out for the remainder of the night. He has a left knee sprain. Estimates are that probably what will happen is he will uh, he will be examined tomorrow morning, further examination, and maybe even have an MRI take a look at the supporting structures of that left knee. But a left knee sprain, and Frank Gore is done for the night. Okay, Jerry, thanks. And you can only hope for Gore and Miami down the line that... The MRI and a further exam tomorrow will show nothing negative with the ligaments. Miami defense aroused. Wilson squirmed back to the 25, a loss of two. Al Marshall shake it up as he made the play. Now, West Virginia had some good running plays, but the thing about it is, I think you got to run right at Miami. The more lateral runs you make, the more pursuit they can get. See him right off the corner now. And also, don't forget, that Marshall got a nice option before and a rollout. That's what I do. There he is rolling and throwing now, incomplete, and he took a shot from Jonathan Vilma as he tried to get it out to Travis Garvey. 
When we went to break, we talked about Miami just scored to tie this game up. And after West Virginia dominating the first quarter, it's 7-7. Seven to seven. It's a new game. We said the old Miami, the team of the last three years, would take this possession and capitalize on it, either creating a turnover, a three and out. And right now, they're off to a good start. This is a big series for Miami to try to regain a hold of this football game. Third and 13, Colson and Wilson are the backs. Dropped by Wilson, incomplete, incomplete pass. And they kick it away, and it's kind of building. Loose yardage, three and out, and now here comes Miami's special teams. Dying to touch one here. Roscoe Parrish is jumping up and down like a little kid who's just been given his bag of candy at Halloween. Waiting for the punt. Let's give me a chance. Let me get That's my hands on it. That's the question. Is he going to get a chance? He's going to tighten up those gloves just in case I get a chance to hold it. Well, Larry Coker said that Roscoe Paris was the most exciting football player he's ever been around, including Barry Sanders. Yep. Now, how about that for a compliment? Well, I sure like wow. Santana Moss. But tell you what Larry Coker said. The most exciting player he's ever been around. A lot of window dressing. Rugby punch. Almost got to it. This is going to This is wrong. I believe they took too much time. Prior to the snap, the way game, offense, I think, I think you and I could have fun debating that one for the rest of the game. You know, Harry Sanders, I, yeah, I know, but... No, but, sweetheart, all I said I, I, was that's what, what Larry, Larry Coker said. said. I didn't say that. What would you say? I wouldn't say that he's the most excited. The best football player I ever saw was Roger Staubach. No, no, he's no, better no, than all I'm these saying, guys wrapped I'm up together. Here. Oh, here? Here, from Miami. Ken Dorsey. I, Kenny Dorsey. Well, most exciting. Most exciting. Put Hang, me on. Down. Hang on. You hold, uh, the, hold that thought for a minute because these guys have got major issues trying to punt. Rugby straight away. <laughs> got it away. It is high. It is short. It's out of bounds. And if you're wondering what happens here, you're going to see the official walk up with his hand up. He makes eye contact with the referee. The referee is the one who tells him, you stop it there. The ball be at midfield. 31 yard kick. Santana Moss. I'll give you guys more time to talk about it. Think about it. Santana Moss. Be right back. ESPN's College Football Thursday. Brought to you by Russell Athletic. Russell Athletic has proudly outfitted 34 national championship football teams. And by Saturn. Makers of the highly adaptable view. Redesigned L-Series. And the fun to drive Ion. Number two in the nation, Miami, has won 36 in a row in the regular season, 25 in a row in the Big East, 24 in a row here in the Orange Bowl. Pushed early, responding now, tied at seven. Star back Frank Gore out with a knee injury for the night. Rock Berlin settled in on the last drive, putting it in the air. Drive start midfield, looking long. Let him go. Ball cut. Incomplete flag in. Lance Frazier pass interference. It'll be first and 10 Miami at the West Virginia 35. He was For trying to hit the most exciting player Larry Coker ever saw. <laughs> Great call <laughs> by Larry Coker and Rob Trudzinski. Go deep on first and 10. Stretch that defense. Get them back. I just like to call, and I know Berlin missed it here. You know, after starting one for four, he's hit nine of his last 11. Throw that ball. If he throws it a little bit earlier, he's able to lead. He's able to lead Parrish for a touchdown. Boy, I like the way he turned his shoulders. You could tell he's been well coached. He had two years under Steve Spurrier. Not that these guys don't know how to coach, but when Steve Spurrier coaches quarterbacks, they know what to do. Rob Chudzinski, former Miami tight end, class of 1990, the offensive coordinator for these games. And one thing that Rob Chudzinski would love to see out of any quarterback, because there's so many options, is you have to continue to develop as a young quarterback and see the defense and spread the wealth to the different players you have out there. Right. Right. Pass to the tight end. Winslow went up and caught it 15 yards, or 10 yards, excuse me. And just shy of the first down. That one, he had a drop in there, but there are times, and Kellen Winslow knows that, so does Brock Berlin, that you got to force the ball to one of the best players in the country. Nice little touch there. As he put it right over a defender, knowing that Kellen Winslow can go up in the air to make the catch. And also, that was 
Kellen Winslow was the primary man, so he didn't have to read too much. Just throw the ball to Kellen Winslow. I like that. Take the ball, throw it to 81. There's nothing wrong with that. Garrett Payton dances to the left. On the first down, a pick up a five close to the 20 yard line. Eight minutes left in quarter two. See, by, by throwing the football, it, it allows that offensive line to be able to push West Virginia. There's a more of a surge on that play than any other run that Miami's been able to have, and it's because of the threat now of the, the pass. West Virginia's defense has to respect that. Miami's going to go with one receiver, Kevin Beard, at the top of your screen. Two tight ends, Kevin Everett, 6'6", 240, and Winslow, the All-America, in motion. Winslow open, but he couldn't get it to him. Berlin's pass was short. Wow, you'd think he was open. You should have seen O'Kellen Winslow. He was waving his arms. Give me the ball. <laughs> he's doing that if he has watch, it. It was a wheel route. Right. When, if he would have stopped yeah. right there, he's open, but he went, he ran right into a defender. Sweetheart, yeah, I know. Which, which defender? I'm with you. Okay. I'm I with just you. wanted to make sure I well, Frazier was back there waiting, but you're right. When you got one on one with Kellen Winslow, you got to take it. And he's six foot nine, 400 pound tight end. <laughs> <laughs> Against 5'11, 190. <laughs> Moore and Parrish come in the game to join Beard. Three receivers, one back. Out of the gun, Peyton runs. Across the 20 and to the 16 yard line. Pick up a five here on the play. Well, a reminder college football Saturday on ESPN down to the Plains in Alabama to see it, Jordan Hare. If Casey Clawson in number seven, Tennessee, can stay unbeaten against Auburn. Game also available on ESPN HD, now available nationwide. 745 Eastern with Ron Franklin, Mike Godfrey, and Adrian Kirsten. Is that on ESPN too? That's no, ESPN. Oh, Tennessee, Georgia, the next week is that's on ESPN. That's a great game. Game. It's great. Yeah, it's on ESPN too. Because oh, yeah, ESPN next week has uh, Wisconsin, Ohio State up in Madison, and Notre Dame Pitt. I'm confused. Stuff they beat up. Just turn it on on Saturday. <laughs> 35. Step in the end zone. Berlin comes to Winslow. He lost it out of bounds. Where will they spot it? It's a catch and a fumble out of bounds. Winslow kept going, but you didn't have the ball, Kelly. <laughs> Let's see where they mark it for the first down. <laughs> Good call. <laughs> Sorry. That's why he's going at it hard. He's. he's Adam Jones, the sophomore out of the Atlanta suburb of College Park, made the play, and the chain's coming in for a measurement. Adam Jones scrappy out there. Might be giving up some size. He's not backing down from Kellen Winslow. First down, Miami. It's 5'10", 190 pounds, going up against 6'5", 250. Sticks him. A little bit of push and watch Jones. <laughs> Sophomore said, hey, back and down. The officials did a nice job spotting the ball on that fumble. You saw right there on the replay. It came out of bounds at the 11, and that's where it was marked. So Miami, which has been very good in the red zone in this 2003 season, has it at the 11. Tries to get the corner. Trying to cut it up inside. He's tumbled down after a gain of a yard. Mike Lorello was hobbled after he made that awkward tackle. We've seen Winslow, the pass catcher. How about him in the blocking form, guys? He's going to try to get upfield to try to pick up the linebacker. That's time going up against Scott Jerko, and he is. He is a physical tight He's become more physical, not just a tight end playing as a receiver. That would be called a pancake, which means he put Jerko on his back. Good block. Bunch formation here at the bottom of the screen. An NFL look with Winslow at the top of the bunch here. Tough to pick up a guy when you're all bunch. The throw is nearly intercepted. I'll tell you what, Lance Frazier had the pick, but with DeAndre Washington out there in coverage as well, knocked it up 19 hands. He did a nice job against a difficult to defend formation that Miami showed there. Well, there's a quarterback. You're just throwing that to a spot. 
And it's about it's a timing route with Kevin Beard hoping he's going to get there before the defender. But Frazier, who's had a really good half, is sitting back and he saw the ball the entire time. And you're right, Mike, he had the pick. Come back to it again, but this time Winslow's up at the top of the screen, perhaps against man coverage. Now he's got two of them. They throw it to the spot again for Ryan Moore, who had no chance of getting there. So the West Virginia defense did a nice job here in the red zone. And Miami will be looking at a field goal of 28 yards. And when they get inside that red zone, that's when they miss that Frank Gore. Remember that Frank Gore against right. Florida? Boy, he made that little cut. And when he, they need that quick running back like Gore inside the red zone, not a pounder like Peyton. One-dimensional like, uh, yeah, one dimensional teams are average in the red exactly. zone. Exactly, you're right, Mike. Doesn't matter which dimension you're good at. Right. Penalty marker is down. Does Virginia try to take a timeout, or do they come in with an illegal substitution? Funny to think of Miami as a one-dimensional team, but when you take away the speed of Frank Gore. Five-yard penalty makes it fourth and three, but you still want to kick the field goal here. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. When you take away Frank Gore, they really have become one-dimensional. 110 yards passing, only 31 rushing. But this is one of the most balanced offenses in the country the last four or five years in college football. Before this game, they had 140 yeah, boy, yeah. runs, 136 passes. Yeah, it's every, every year they, they can hurt you both ways. Yep. Some of the fans murmuring that the Canes should go for it, but you yeah. need a long three, maybe even four yards. And let Petty kick here from 22. You want to go in halftime winning if possible. I don't care if it's 10 to 7 or what. Petty hasn't missed from under 20 yards. And you see that announcer jinx isn't always true. He still hasn't missed from under 40 yards. And Miami comes back from down 7-0 at the quarter. They've scored the last 10. Rich Rodriguez's offense has hit a little bit of a wall. Let's see what happens when you come back. Well, down by the Miami student section, their attention was focused on Tallahassee. And the visit coming up in nine days to Florida State. On ABC at noon Eastern, not AM Pacific, but uh, Larry Coker trying to warn his team about taking care of business here this week because they haven't been as sharp as they wanted in the last few games. And if Coker or everyone else around Miami did not get their attention, West Virginia's 162-yard first quarter got their attention. Mountaineers led 7 nothing. Miami's responded with the last 10. And Larry Coker did something interesting this week. He practiced first team offensive against first team defense to get the tempo going because he thought he might have a letdown, and he was absolutely yep. right psychologically. I, I think that hurricane heading to Tallahassee has turned to a tropical storm. Yeah, first time. AJ Harris from the two yard line. Slow start. That room over the 20 and out to the 28 yard line. So West Virginia's field position has been backed up. Well, guys, West Virginia had 165 yards of total offense in the first quarter, just 10 since here. What has happened to the West Virginia offense that they were doing so well early that they're not doing now? Well, Miami started playing harder. That's number one on defense. But I think the key thing is a nice offensive plan by Rich Rodriguez and his staff kept Miami off balance. I think the first half so far, you've seen a West Virginia team play with great hunger yeah. and a great attitude. The big thing, like it always is with Miami, one play, one sequence of plays, it can turn the game around completely. But West Virginia's defense holding Miami to three was very big. Now let's see what Rasheed Marshall can do to try to keep a little bit of momentum for the Mountaineers. Seventh drive of the night. Best field position to start for WVU. Rasheed Marshall, the quarterback, he's trying to go up top for his big man. Caught by Chris Henry. They'll spot Henry out of bounds after a pickup of 28 at the Miami 44. Well, that's taking advantage of a tall receiver. Henry is six four and a half, maybe close to six five. And Marshall, known as a running quarterback, also has worked very hard on throwing the ball. Look at this throw, right over the shoulder of Henry. And Henry has the speed to get by Antrell Roll to get open against that man coverage. And Antrell Roll is one of the best defensive backs in the country. So that means great job by the side of West Virginia. West Virginia's got to do what Miami's done, loosen them up to get the running game going again. Right. The 45, J.C. Wilson, the penalty marker down. And this play is whistled dead. 
Prior to the snap, false start, offense, five yard penalty, remains first down. For those of you who don't follow uh, the Big East on a regular basis, Rich Rodriguez and his team, three and eight in his first season, took over after the legendary Don Nealon was so successful at West Virginia. Three and eight year one. They come in last year, go nine and four, get to the Continental Tire Bowl. Rodriguez given a seven year, nearly $6 million extension. Team off to the one and three start here, a very young team, a lot of key personnel change. After the flag, second and long, Wilson gashes the can, still going across the 30, dragging Miami players to the 25. 25 yards, a strong running for the kid from Weirton, West Virginia. What a great call by West Virginia. They, Kirk, they run a sweet play, and they caught him on an inside blitz. Everybody blocked down, 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 and, it, and watch it, Kirk. They leave a little bit of a seam there. Watch the blitz. Everybody blocks down right there, number one. K.J. Harris had a key block. Well, not only to catch him in the blitz, Coach, but also tough running and poor tackling from the Miami secondary. Well carries, 82 yards for the senior Quincy Wilson. From the 25, K.J. Harris has the corner, 15 and 10, pushes forward to the 5. So this is the Mountaineer team we saw at the start of the game, guys. Running hard, running through the Canes. And West Virginia has already run for over 125 yards on the night. First, First and goal. Mike, this is amazing. Two plays in a row that this Miami defense is not able to come up and watch it. This is an All-American that's coming up to make a play. They have eight guys up in the box. Sean Taylor, make the play right there. How about that by, by these running backs from West Virginia, the strength and power this time of Harris to be able to get up here. And remember, Harris is from Tampa, Florida, so he'd love to win this game even more. <laughs> Fauna, the fullback, in motion to lead the way, but Harris shows the inside route, and nothing was home. Second down coming up. How has West Virginia been as an offense inside the red zone? They've been pretty good. Uh, coming into tonight, they were in there ten times, scored nine, eight of them touchdowns. Again, the team that can do it all, run and pass, effective in the red zone. This has been an impressive drive. You know, after their touchdown, where they threw the wheel route and scored yep. their next 10 plays, they couldn't do anything. This, this is another drive where they've been able to come up and get the Miami defense on their heels. Boy, I'd make sure that Marshall number two is in on the goal line, roll it out somewhere. They keep it like that. It's to throw it. The throw is too high and incomplete for Josh Bailey. Josh Bailey, a tight end, and if the tight end would have caught it for West Virginia, would have been... News border to border in the state. <laughs> no West Virginia tight end has caught a pass thus far this year in 17 quarters and 12 minutes. Well, that's Rich Rodriguez. Give him all the credit in the world going against a lot of his tendencies coming to this game. You can tell that Miami's confused with this package that they're seeing tonight from West Virginia. Rich Rodriguez, really the last three years going up against Miami, has put together a heck of a package and trying to catch Miami off guard. It's one of those things that happens when you have an off week. Self-scout yourself. Yep. Go against your tendencies. Good well, offensive coach. mind helps. Yep. Timeout for Mountaineers. Third and goal coming up when you come back. On this drive, West Virginia's had plays of 27, 25, and 20 yards. Moving it downfield and in position to try to take the lead against Miami. Don't want to turn it over here. Nope. Field goal ties the game. Getting closer to halftime. I wouldn't be surprised. What I would call is I'd spread them all out and I'd run the option play. That gives, that gives old Marshall a chance to pitch it or cut it in. I, I love to get Marshall a chance on the edge option or bootleg. Give him a chance to run or throw. A run straight ahead. Wilson pounding forward. Right. Finally stopped at the two. So from here, it's an extra point size field goal, but from the right hash mark. If I was going to set up a field goal, I would have ran the ball to the left. Thank you. Because then you could kick the ball right in the middle. That's what I would have done, Rich Rodriguez. And but I would not have run the ball to set up a field goal because I'd have tried to get a touchdown. You're going to let it run all the way down, then take time out. Oh, Sykes shaking up for Miami. They're a uh, senior strong safety. So Miami, if you're just joining us, they've already lost... A terrific tailback and Frank Gore to a knee injury. He's out for the remainder of the game. Now they look at Sykes. 
Brandon Merriweather is prepared to enter the game by defensive backs coach Mark Stoops. That's a famous name in it, Mark Stoops. Brother Bobby, Mike, great coaches at Oklahoma. An interesting stat about Mark Stoops. His dad was a defensive coordinator at Cardinal Mooney High School in Youngstown, Ohio for 28 years. Is that a coaching family or is what? It, I think that's two weeks in a row that Cardinal Mooney that's has right. made it into the Just a second. Go ahead. Don Bucci. 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 Don Bucci. Finish it off. All right, Don Bucci. One Don of my Bucci. favorite coaches of all time. Yep. Youngstown. What West Virginia tried to do here was get to the fourth down, let the clock run down and call the timeout, but obviously the clock was stopped with the injury to Sykes, who had shoulder surgery back in the offseason. He played most of last year with one arm. He was injured all year and played through the pain, and now he is up, but uh, very groggy and ginger, ginger Lee, I should say, being helped off the field. One thing I found as a coach, when a team is not psychologically ready and focused, they get a lot of guys nicked up. You ever notice that? Well, mark that down in your calendar to watch. If a team's not fired up, a lot of guys get nicked up and carried out or held off or something because they're not getting hit. They're hitting, you're getting hit and not hitting. Here's the field goal kicker. Yeah. He's on the sideline. The team is out on the field thinking about going for it. Many of those fourth down attempts were in longer situations than this. Well, the old ball coach here might have a, a trick or two up his sleeve. Well, I wouldn't do it. The, the game, the clock does restart. They might be taking the time here to wind it down and take time out before zero and get the field goal. Maybe they're going to go for it. Let's see. Well, that's Richard Rodriguez. <laughs> I wouldn't do this. I'd tie the score. He hasn't snapped it yet. Yeah. Sarah doesn't look real excited to snap it either. Shake it over the out. See the play clock. It's down to zero. Yeah, just back on it. Right comes down. Because of the injury, the injury happened on a play that was within the sidelines, thus the clock was able to restart. Delay game on the offense. Five yard penalty. I would decline the penalty because the angle is better when you move five back yards. Back five yards. Sure. I would keep the ball right where it was. I'd take the kind of penalty, Miami. You could do it. Yep. We don't want to do it. This did everything right for Rodriguez. Gave him a better angle for his kicker who yeah, struggled. Right. This kid's got a really good leg. <laughs> Officially a 25-yard attempt to square the game. And powered through by Brad Cooper. So a nice drive for the Mountaineers. They have to settle for a field goal, but... If you told anybody in West Virginia, you know, inside of three minutes left, it's going to be a 10-10 game, they would have signed for that and take their chances from there. Coming off to Maryland, <laughs> they, they would take 10 to 10 against anybody at halftime, let alone the number two team in the country on the road. This is an unbelievable effort and performance by not only Rasheed Marshall, but this entire West Virginia team playing with great heart today. How about that offensive line you oh, mentioned yeah. earlier in the show, boy? They have done a nice Cross job of controlling along. Nice scrimmage. You know, they have 125 yards rushing and 124 yards passing. Wow. I thought Miami was going to come in with such great balance. And after a, not quite a half, it's West Virginia, the offense, that's showing great balance. And that was Miami's intention coming in, but I think yeah. the injury to Gore oh, has yeah. changed everything short-term and who knows how long. Again, Gore injured his knee. Mo Sykes being held back to the locker room now. The Frank Gore knee injury, Jerry Punch told us, out for the game. They'll do further exam uh, tomorrow on his knee. Let's go down to Jerry right now. And, guys, the reason that uh, John Uribe takes these players like Frank Gore now and Mo Sox in the locker room is out here with all the noise and everything, everybody watching, it's hard for a young man to relax. You get so much guarding, it's hard to really examine the knee. They're going to go in, take a look at the right knee. It was the right knee they're looking at, by the way, on Mo Sox. We'll update you right before halftime. All right, Doc Punch, thank you. Nobody better have you covered until yeah. he gets open, Doc. Brad Cooper shows some of that strong leg. Oh, yeah. So they try to decide to pop it up. Nice job by Darnell Jenkins to run forward, catch the little pooch kick, and take it out to the 31-yard line. What are you doing at halftime? Going to eat lunch? Eat dinner? Or are you going to wait for Fowler? 
Oh, yeah, get away from Fowler. All right, let's see what Chris team and, player. See Chris and company have coming up at halftime. Hey, Chris. We hey, Mike. We have the Pontiac High Performance Halftime Report. It's a Thursday tradition, guys. Five teams, five questions. And I'll tell you who I think is the best team in the Pac-10 halftime. And we'll look at Nebraska's offense and see if they're balanced enough. Yes, Mark, I'm talking about even in the passing game. Plus the singular wireless poll question, who's the Heisman frontman? Only, only 10 weeks to go, so it is a burning topic at halftime, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. See you guys in a little bit. Chris Trevenmark back in the studio. First team 10, drive start from the 31. Five options to throw. Now hitting out of the backfield. Shy of the 40, second and a couple coming up. We have a tight game in addition to the second half. Uh, some topics on the landscape we'll touch on in the second half, including Miami trying to keep alive their win streaks. 36 in a row in the regular season, 25 in the Big East, and 24 here in the Orange Bowl. Peyton, first down, pick up a five, the shy of the 45. Well, what I would be concerned about for Miami, I know it's 10-10, but if you get a turnover and let these guys stay in the ball game or get a, an easy touchdown, like a pick six, you're a big time trouble. At the same time, Brock Berlin with this no huddle shotgun seems to really find a comfort zone. There's plenty of time here to attack down field. Look at the receiver. Comes back left to Ryan Moore, gets out of bounds at the 41 yard line. There's two minutes left now. Miami has all of its timeouts. They locked into the two minute offense, and they're a better offense. The, the, I'm telling you, know, you with Rob right. Berlin, I think, I think this sure. offense, and Rob Trzinski and Larry Coker are going to have to look at this as they get ready for the second half and then get ready for next week. There's Rob Trzinski against Florida State in Tallahassee. This is an offense that seems to have more rhythm from the shotgun when they go no huddle. Time is not an issue, Coach. I, I, I think you got to attack and get downfield and try to get some points. But you got to be very careful to keep the underdog really in the game with a turnover. Here then Parrish at the bottom of your screen. There are the two receivers. They're in looking left for Ryan Moore. To the 30 inside the 35. He's out of Orlando, Lee, and I know oh. a guy that you've seen way beyond just his first year here at Miami. When I saw that young man at Dr. Phillips High School as a sophomore. I said that was one of the best-looking basketball players and athletes. He led it in track, led it in basketball and football, one of the best-looking athletes ever to come out of Central Florida. I feel that Ryan Moore, with the more experience he gets, can be a Reggie Wayne type of receiver, really a, a difference maker on the outside. Wayne, a difference maker now for Peyton Manning on the other side of Marvin Harrison for the Colts. How good were they? Oh, they they look good. New Orleans. Up, every night. Second and three. Berlin's getting a lot of time to throw. Morgan! Ball came out. I thought it was after it hit the ground. It was. Good job by the field judge, Ben Van Snotsky. On that, 20 yards. Uh, if you're going to give Brock Berlin time like this, one of the, the routes you're going to have to be able to defend is the dig route, the crossing route at about 18 yards. Nice job by the offensive line. Look how comfortable Berlin looks. He's taken about two or three hitches. He's definitely down. The ball comes out once he hits the ground. But it's, it's almost like watching a different quarterback when you watch him back there in a shotgun, sitting back there in total command of this offense. And a nice job by Moore to pick up the yardage. Good number. Peyton will pick up the blitz. Winslow crosses at the five. He'll be shy of a first down, buck 18 left. In our discussion yesterday when we had with Brock Berlin, remember he got in an argument with Jonathan Vilma and they were talking about the two-minute drill, and, and they go good against good, and that's why they're so good at this, Mike. And he said, we're ahead three to two, and I thought they're going to have a little fight right yeah, there. Yeah, Vilma said, uh, go, go ahead, tell the truth. Yeah, tell, tell, tell the truth, Brock. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm not going to say anything. You tell them the deal on the two-minute drill. Berlin said, well, we won one. <laughs> <laughs> Berlin's five of five on this drive. They'll snap it from the five. We going South Beach post game tonight, guys. I got a 6 a.m. man. I got 6:50. I'm on the air tomorrow, boss. We might go to the Grove. LC, you going out tonight? <laughs> Blue pajamas, white socks, as fast as I can get. <laughs> Little chicken tonight, yeah. late? No, it's too, too late. late. Too late. Too late. Yeah, too late. Yeah, too late. <laughs> breakfast in the morning. <laughs> Brock Berlin, five of five on this drive. Three of them to Ryan Moore, the redshirt freshman receiver. This is where they miss Frank Gore. Let's see if Peyton can pick it up here. Garrett Payton runs right, hanging forward, down to the one. 
We'll have about a minute five left in a Miami first down. When they spot it and get it going. Completely different feel with Jared Payton. Jared Payton's going to lower that, that shoulder and run over top of you. Whereas Frank Gore was elusive and had just outstanding vision. 6'2 compared to 5'10. Different types of body weight. Brandon Seabold, the third string tight end, is in to join Everett and Winslow. That's Seabold in motion. And Peyton running right. Can he get to the corner? The Mountaineers do a good job of pursuing. Miami has two timeouts left. Use one here. There they go with 39 seconds remaining. bit of breeze tonight a humid night temperature the 80s to start in the high 70s now humidity not too far from that and Rich Rodriguez among all of us feeling the effects but it's still a pretty picture from up top whatever the Goodyear blimp is flying above a stadium you know it's a big game overhead tonight providing these beautiful aerial views the Florida Bay Stars and Stripes one of three airships in the Goodyear blimp fleet if I was Miami right now I would definitely get that ball to number 81 Kellen Winslow Get some good moves that, here. That is Italy. definitely the scooter. South Beach? Scooter, that looks like your moves right there in the front. Not me. Are you kidding me? <laughs> white pajamas. <laughs> I need my blue pajamas and white socks. Again, get back to football, you yeah, guys. Yeah, thank you. Just thought I'd mention it. Yeah. Kellen <laughs> Winslow, number percent. 81 right now, is the key guy. Remember, they either throw him on a fade, a crossing move or something, but definitely get the ball to number 81. You know what I think we, you can think about doing here is you have the fade and you have yeah. the quick slam. Right. And depending on how Winslow, when he lines up out there, if they decide to flex him out, yeah. uh -huh. depending on how that de defender lines up either inside or the outside will dictate he'll give a sign back into Brock Berlin to tell him what he's going to do. So you give him the option out there depending on That's what right. the corner's going to do. If get they the ball him to him. Yeah. Wherever he is. If he's sitting over the sideline, flex him out to the right. Brian Moore, the basketball player. Oh, no, 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 no. Flex. Where he's now. Yeah, yeah, now yeah. you have an option here of the fade against a, a defensive back who's 5'10". Yep. He's got inside leverage here. This will be a good fade to the top. Seven-inch height difference at where Berlin goes. And it is intercepted by Adam Jones. I told you he should throw the ball to Winslow. That was a great play by Jones. It was a horrible throw by Brock Winston. And you have Kellen Winslow, who's 6'5", going up against him. Adam Jones at 5'10". The whole stadium knew that this was going to happen. Yeah. Put some air under it and throw it to the corner. He got too cute with it. He short-armed it. He tried to aim the ball, and he threw it right into the arms of Adam Jones, who did a good job of bodying Kellen Winslow to the corner. You talk about the play and the physical stature and the change. You need a tough guy to make that play. Adam Jones is a young man who was toughened in the difficult area of Atlanta, in the projects, and saw his dad die at a young age. And that time going up against Kellen Winslow was not a big issue for him. He's always had to deal with that height disadvantage uh, during his stretch. And what a play there to stop the momentum for Miami and keep this game tied at halftime. Adam Jones' effort in his first half, not just that play, Mike, but this whole half kind of represents West Virginia in that underdog role coming in. They had to move Brian King to free safety. Adam Jones is forced in to start, and he had a great half. One thing also about Jones, he gave up seven inches to Winslow on that play, but Brock Berlin's pass never gave Winslow a chance to use the 6-5 statue. Halftime, shocker in South Florida. All tied at 10. Got punches, Larry Coker. Well, Coach, a shocker here at halftime. A sluggy start by the Hurricanes. What is your message to the offense at halftime? Well, offensively, we've got to do things to, to, to win the football game. We're not doing things to make, to make plays. We're getting our playmakers the ball at times. We're being impatient at times. We get out, we throw, we throw interceptions. So, again, we're just not doing things to win the football game, not playing smart football. And defensively, we're giving up too many. We got long runs, long pass. Uh, again, we're not just not doing things to win. Okay, Coach, thanks so much. Third year in a row, guys, this spread, spread offense has moved the football on the Miami Hurricane. That's right, Doc. A four-touchdown favorite. Miami will get the ball to start the second half, but they are being pushed. All squared at 10. Now the Pontiac high-performance halftime report. Chris Trez and Mark. It's team survival as West Virginia has come in here. The Mountaineers 
with their good running game plus the injury to Frank Gore that we talked about earlier the injured left knee out in the first quarter further examination tomorrow has given Rashid Marshall in West Virginia the opportunity to believe in themselves and after they saw Miami score 10 unanswered in the second quarter a well led drive by Marshall Rich Rodriguez is spread offense hitting the pass at the right time power running on Miami and now Brock Berlin and Miami are in a ball game all tied at 10 Berlin's been in the shotgun he's been more comfortable looked a little better as we got through the second quarter but the big pick at the end of the quarter trying to get Kellen Winslow for a go ahead score has left this game all evening. Mike Tarico, Lee Corso, Kirk Herbstreit, Dr. Jerry Punch. Glad you're on board for college football Thursday and a much more interesting game than many thought. Adam Jones interception at the end of the half allowed West Virginia to stay tied. Winslow and Miami offense will get the ball first to start the third quarter. It is a humid night which always becomes a factor with the road team in Miami. We'll watch West Virginia closely as quarter three begins. With the kickoff return. Well covered. <laughs> Tarnell Jenkins didn't get back to the 20, and the Mountaineers loved it. KJ Harris, who's been everywhere tonight for West Virginia, made the big play. Shocked, surprised? Oh, oh, yeah. oh, shocked. And I think the key, though, is Rich Rodriguez and his staff, both offensively and defensively, tremendous game yeah. plans on both sides of the ball. Tremendous game plan. And give the players and the coaches from West Virginia a lot of credit. The attitude. It's 10-10 to 10 because one team showed up at 1-3 and three with a hungrier attitude than the home team tonight. They have to maintain that in the second half. They didn't win this game because they're tied 10-10. to 10. They're going to either win or lose in this second half. First down run, Jared Payton. Gains about a yard, and that's it. I'm not afraid to stick their nose in here. Mike Lorello made the tackle. Lee, what coaching adjustments would you make? For Miami, they went 65 yards in less than two minutes using the shotgun with Brock Berlin. Kirk, he threw the ball left, he threw the ball right. He looked much more comfortable. That's what I do. I don't know if I would go to a two-minute offense just for the entire half, but I would if I had to throw the ball, get Brock Berlin back in the shotgun because he seems to be more comfortable and able to find his rhythm by throwing the football back in the shotgun. Goes the Home Depot coaching adjustments. Second and eight, and here is Peyton with some space, but not the speed to get away from Grant Wiley, the top tackler on this Mountaineer team, called the unquestioned leader of the team by his coach, Rich Rodriguez, with third and six coming up. Grant Wiley, the thing I was impressed about him last week, he had 11 tough tackles against Maryland, a game they were getting uh, beat really bad Shall before I? he left on cramps. I started something really nice, but let me something. That, the guys that I like on my football team is when you get beat bad, make all the tackles. That guy's a football player right there. And he's made plenty of tackles in his Mountaineer career. Third and eight. Here's Adam Jones, nine. He's back to you. Or third and five, I should say. Coverage on Ryan Moore in Miami. He's now going to be faced with third and ten. Prior to the snap, fast start, offense, five-yard penalty, remains third down. I think this is a, a, a big sequence of plays and also a big third down, not only for Miami, but for Brock Berlin. Don't forget, Lee, you talked about the two-minute offense and the shotgun and moving the Canes down. This is a third down to end the half. He, he tried to throw that ball perfectly instead of just getting back and throwing it to the pylon and letting his bigger receiver make the play. And Jones, of course, came up with the interception. That's how he ended the half. He needs to come back here now in the second half and try to find his rhythm. Does that mentally hang with you? Well, a bad pass like that? I think a guy like Brock Berlin has shown the ability to shake it. Remember the Florida game he was able to do that. So I, I wouldn't be shocked to see him bounce back in the second half. He fires for more incomplete. That West Virginia zone didn't give him many places to throw. And it is three and out to start quarter three. Credit this West Virginia defense that have been given up nearly 400 yards per game. Jeff Castile, their defensive coordinator, has uh, done a nice job with this 3-3-5 defense. Remember, they ran the first two plays. That was not my recommendation. <laughs> Just thought I'd mention it. You want the two-minute, right? Absolutely. Ryan Monroe's catch is away. Fair catch. Oh, boy, the folks in West Virginia are clapping. They are clapping at their TV, but it was not the Pac-Man Lance Frazier went back to make the catch their normal kick punt returner in most situations Adam the Pac-Man Jones never 
fair catches. <laughs> and it drives folks wild. <laughs> Let's go game track for you. If you're just joining us, here's what's happened. Now West Virginia has jumped uh, back in this game. One, because Miami's changed its offense. Only 41 rushing yards after the knee injury to Frank Gore. The Mountaineers have run 23 times for 125 yards. Brock Berlin intercepted twice. The start of the game, then the end of the half, as the Pac-Man Jones came up with the INT. Best field position for the night for West Virginia from its own 35. Quincy Wilson. No game, second and ten. Doc, what were the Mountaineers talking about in Rich Rodriguez's locker room? A fired up Mountaineer locker room at halftime. Rich Rodriguez's message, guys, if we don't put the football on the ground early twice, we should be leading here at the end of halftime. He said, guys, one play at a time, one play at a time. Not halves, not quarters, one play at a time. The big leadership coming from the senior Quincy Wilson getting his offensive line fired up at halftime. Wilson just went off. Marshall throws on the run. Incomplete. They ran on that look earlier tonight. They throw it there. Incomplete. Wilson hobbles off and they'll check him. You know, a name we did not call in the first half. I don't, maybe one time for Miami. Jonathan Vilma. If Miami's going to be able to take control of this football game and get their defense back to playing uh, the way they should be, Jonathan Vilma needs to become that active leader. He had such a great game against Boston College in the first two plays here to start the second half. He made the tackle and then he chased Marshall into the boundary to have to throw that ball through the trailer. Marshall faces third and ten. The West Virginia quarterback, one of his last five. Takes off. Can he get the block to get the first down? Spinning, moving forward. He's just going to end up short. Sean Taylor almost got there. D.J. Williams cleaned it up. And the Mountaineers are going to have fourth and less than a yard from their own 45. What do you think? Fourth and less yard, you guys. Oh, it's your job, Lee. Punt, punt, punt the ball down to Miami and make them make the mistake. Remember, they're the number two team in the nation, and you got them tied. Yeah. All of the pressure is on Miami. Punt it, Coach Rodriguez. Punt it. But you got to say it's a no-brainer, don't you? You're on your own 44, 10 to 10. Yeah. You got to punt the ball. Well, yeah, could be. <laughs> But some guys would go for it. <laughs> Todd James to punt. Miami's had virtually no return yards tonight. That's so important. They get it away quickly. Roscoe Paris is back. Has a chance to return from the 19th. He's got two blocks here if he can get the corner. He slowed down enough. Now reverses his field and he's tripped up at the 15. Woo! Minus four on the return. The kick was 37. Abraham Jones rose up to make the play. Brock Berlin and the Canes, a long field to deal with when you come back. There is West Virginia's best tailback, Quincy Wilson, dealing with uh, cramping issues on the sideline. We'll go check with Jerry Punch momentarily. Guys, how many times have we been to the Orange Bowl and seen this with the visitors in the second half right after halftime? Every year without fail, here in the Holiday Bowl, same thing. We see it all the time. Fourth field position for Miami to start tonight. It's own 15. Berlin to throw. Nice pass to Kevin Everett, the other side end. Six, six, digs the goal. Strong as an ox. Took him out to the 34. And a flag comes in with late pushing. I think that might have been Adam Jones getting a little too physical. I think it's going to be on Kellen Winslow for coming to the face of Adam Jones. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think he retaliated. Jones' body language came towards Winslow after the whistle, mm -hmm. but didn't make contact. And then Winslow came up with two two hands to the face of Jones. And these are the guys who were head to head on the interception play well, at the end of the half. Mike, it's been going on the entire half. There's a lot of chirping going on back and forth. Winslow, of course, is right in the middle of it for Miami. West Virginia's defensive backs are almost taunting him, trying to get him to do something that he would regret. After the play was over, personal foul on the offense, personal foul on the defense, the penalties offset. I think what I saw was the second yep. one, and you caught the first one. Yep, it's the retali Jones retaliated, you know, and, and that's part of talking trash. You're going to get a guy to do something that he regrets. Watch this right close to the camera, real close, boom, and this retaliation right there. Both those guys lucky they're not thrown out of this football game. Really, really lucky. Two swings to the face mask. And really they, lucky. And, and you, know, you know what, right now? Rich Rodriguez is saying, hey, don't back down. If they're going to come at you, come right back. Man. That Jones shot, that's a punch to the face. I know it's in retaliation, but it's still a punch to the face. Yep. And in my vote, that's fighting when you get thrown out. 
We've had a couple of those the last few weeks. That's right. Miami moves. Berlin's clapping as though they induced West Virginia in first. I don't, I'm with you. I don't think he saw Kevin Beard in motion. Maybe. Who knows? Prior to the snap. They got it. They got it. Yep. Defense. Five-yard penalty. Remains first down. We mentioned Quincy Wilkson cramping a moment ago. Let's go visit with Doc for a second. Exactly, Michael. Uh, this heat and humidity beginning to take its toll on some of the Mountaineers. There's Quincy Wilson sitting down trying to stretch to keep him getting some cramps in both calves. They're trying to get him stretched out. At halftime, IVs for Adam Jones. He was likewise cramping after uh, putting it all on the line in the first half. He's back in the game, but they're concerned about keeping fluids in him as well. So that's why Lance Frazier was back to catch the last punt. First and five. He's on the tight end, looking for number nine, looking for the ball first from his number seven. He's going to block go, as Peyton puts it back across the 45, has a first down at the 48-yard line. Brian King joins Adam Jones with the tackle after the game of eight. And I, it was a nice run there, good vision by Jared Payton. The I think Kellen Winslow really needs to try to control his emotions. He is a great player. The best tight end, one of the best players in college football. He's, a, he's go, waiting. He gets go. the pancake. But he doesn't need to do this. I mean, every single play, he's got something to say to a West Virginia defender. And the 47 play pass. Quadrin Hill, the fullback, is knocked out of bounds. Wiley, the left linebacker, leads his team in tackles, stops him. For no game. Kirk, doesn't it come back to Winslow's frustration of seeing triple cover? Built as the Heisman guy preseason, the unbelievable game in the championship game against Ohio State. Seeing triple cover and not seeing the ball the way he saw it last year. I think it's a combination of things. I think it's frustration for not getting the opportunities, but I also think it's a volatile personality and he loses his cool sometimes. I know he's a competitor, he's a great competitor, but I think if, the reason it's a big deal to me is because Miami has tried to shake that image that they talk trash every play, and then Kellen Winslow is bringing that attitude back to Miami. Yes. Ball in hand. Into him for the first down marker. Get back in the huddle, great play. You don't need to say anything, just get back in the huddle. And I like to look for Lance Frazier, pick up a 13. Coach. I'd like to add one thing, competitive or not, there's no place in football for a showboat like Winslow talking and talking. Talk. You play football, and then you go across, catch it, get back in the huddle like you've been there before. There's no reason in the world to be talking so much. It just bothers the hell out of me when you get these great players that eat it out, that eat it out. Play. Play the game, get back in the huddle. I understand he's trying to spark his team, but, but he does, like I said, it's been going on the entire game between Winslow and his defense. Berlin rolling to this side. Good job by Miami. Feet on the ball if he's angry. Two to the 21 yard line. First there down. A Rob Kuczynski, the offensive coordinator, is an old tight end. And when Kellen Winslow was playing against BC earlier this year, and you see him continuing what these guys were talking about, he wasn't getting the ball. He got frustrated, got on the phone with his offensive coordinator, and said, Let's run. I want to block. And they kept running and ran behind Winslow trying to get that frustration properly focused right. into football here. When they put this guy number 84 in there, Kevin Elbert, Everett, you're going to see another pro tight end come out of this place. 6'6", 240 pound junior college guy from Fort F, Arthur, Texas. Keep your eye on number 84. That is a man. First down, Peyton runs up the middle into the red zone now. And to the 18 yard line. I don't want to let this guy this go guys because I don't want to squash your point because I'm the one who can't stand Yapping and I think more flags should be thrown for celebration But I in talking to Kellen the other day I sensed such frustration things off the field the build-up to the season Not seeing the ball and I think it's coming out whenever you get to a stress point with him Well, I also think that Beyond the frustrations, I think he knows he got a lot of hype for what he did in that Fiesta Bowl by sparking his team in the second half emotionally. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes a, still a young player right. thinks that he has to always do that, provide that spark. He doesn't always have to be that volatile leader for the Miami Hurricanes. Just be a great player, one of the best in the country. You could still provide some emotion without talking trash to your opponent. Prior to the snap, offsides, defense, 
Five-yard penalty. Remain second down. Backup nose tackle Craig Wilton out of River Ridge, Louisiana, was in the game for Ben Lynch. And this is a little bit of what Rich Rodriguez told us this morning. Have to get my second teamers in because they're going to get exhausted in this heat and humidity. These guys are inexperienced and might make key mistakes. Given Miami's second and three. Can you, can you feel a different attitude with this offense? It's, it's, they, they've made some adjustments and they're being able to find different ways to open up this offense by staying under center with their quarterback. Things well in motion. Watch, stays in. Now releases as the check down. Got to the 15 and got level. Man, heads are popping down there. Jones was up there first. Morello came for the cleanup. From the sidelines, it looks like to me as a former coach that this ball game is going to get down to winning with field goals and defense. It's no longer going to be an offensive explosion from Miami because they don't have the running attack. They are a one-dimensional football team right now, yep. and they're going to have problems. they got to kick field goals and play good defense if they're going to beat West Virginia today. That's my opinion. 52 yards rushing, 219 yards passing. That is not the Miami offense. Four for the first down, 15 for the touchdown. Down. The pressure came from that same guy, Mike Morello, out of Powell, Ohio. My suburb of Columbus, right? Oh, okay. yeah, but I got a great story about this guy. Good. Mike Lorello, Lorello is a five-time soccer state championship team. He plays basketball and lacrosse. Have you ever heard of a guy who's a member of a five-time soccer hey. championship team without a kicker? Hey. That's right, he's not a kicker. No, no, nothing but great athletes in Powell High. Oh, jeez. 32-yard field goal for John Petty. Attempt from the right. Out of Matt Carter's hold. The kick is good. Winslow, a couple of big catches to get him in field goal range. Miami retakes the lead. Now Rasheed Marshall and West Virginia have to answer. They did last time they were trailing. ESPN's College Football Thursday, brought to you by Cadillac, Bold Vehicles, Defying Convention, and by Bud Light, for the great taste that won't fill you up and never lets you down. Make it a Bud Light. The great city of Miami, Florida, Kings 13, Mountaineers 10, halfway through quarter number three. This humid night may take a toll on the Mountaineers before all is said and done. I have to watch them as they continue to cramp up and get as much fluid as possible in on the sideline. Brian Monroe's kickoff. He's taken back from the two. KJ Harris eludes one tackler and got pushed out of bounds at the 21. A couple of big Miami injuries in the first half. Let's go check in with Dr. Jerry Punch. Well, guys, we might just reiterate that Frank Gore, there's Frank back out on the bench, his left knee examined in the locker room. He will have an MRI tomorrow morning. Likewise, the right knee of Mo Sykes examined at halftime. He will probably have an MRI. The focus for both MRIs will be to take a long, hard look at the anterior cruciate ligament in both those great athletes. Again, Frank Gore, there's Frank on the bench, and Mo Sykes, left knee for Gore, right knee for Sykes. Examination tomorrow by John Uribe. You can only hope it's uh, good news, but so often it's not. And best wishes to those kids of Miami's season and their careers. Pressure on, Marshall got out of his hands. Loss of two as D. Alston was lucky to hang on. Sean Taylor hit him and hit him hard. Without Mo Sykes back in that secondary, Brandon Merriweather's in there, a redshirt freshman from Apopka, Florida. We'll join Taylor at the safety spot. The young player been talking to Mark Stoops. That's one position that they feel pretty comfortable with their depth is that back end with their safeties in their corners. Second and 12. Option look. Snuffed out by Miami. And Brian Potter got over there for the early input. Vilma cleaned it up at the end, and it might be Pata who took the worst of it. Ryan, the freshman out of Miami Central High School, is shaken up. Well, you, hate, you just hate to see this. For... 
anybody, but it's, this Miami team has been a mash unit this year. They have, they have been hit by the injury bug probably more so than, than any other team that's trying to chase a, a conference championship and ultimately a national championship. It's, it's amazing they've been able to survive with so many new players, but also because of so many key injuries. Miami's entire offseason was all tied up with players injured, couldn't get everybody on the field for two a days. And now Pata, a freshman who's so promising that the Baraka Atkins out with a right ankle injury tonight. Pata earned the starting spot, true freshman. Just down the street here, Miami Central High School. There's Atkins, who's the one out while Pata comes in. And now two defensive ends are out here tonight for Miami. That'll be uh, Javon Nanton, who has a couple of sacks. He'll come in and play defensive end now, but the primary focus is the injury to Potter. And he looks to be in considerable pain. You guys talk about so often, look at the championship teams. It's coaching, it's players, it's recruiting, it's everything. And it's luck. And staying healthy. Catching, catching the breaks. The right whistle at the right time, the right flag, the right wind direction, the right weather. Staying healthy. And that's one of the reasons why there's only been two teams in the last 30 some years repeat as national yep. title holders because you got to have your A game. And usually, as I said before, and I might be wrong, I said Ohio State used up three years luck last year. Well, they, they got and some, they sprinkled and, in some this yeah, year. Yeah, but that, not that much. They've, at least they've been winning no. the close games, but it hasn't been lucky like that fourth down play against Illinois, you know, and, 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 um, against Purdue, excuse me. And uh, But I think what happens is. That football teams do get lucky, but they balance out eventually. It's somebody else's turn to get lucky this year. And Potter walking off. That's a good sign to see. Mm -hmm. It's also been some uh, great leadership from Larry Coker as well as the head coach of this Miami Hurricane program, 28 and 1. Now in his 30th game as the head coach at U.M. after replacing Brooks Davis. Looking at Miami's defense, guys. Third down situations. They lead the nation. It's, they came in leading the nation, and tonight West Virginia's 0 for 5. It's now 13 percent. 8 of 58 for teams trying to advance on third down against this defense. And another third and long. That's what most of them have been. Third and 12. And Steve Marshall loaded up and was covered. Now throws deep into coverage. It's almost intercepted by Merriweather. Every place he looked, there were green shirts multiplying. And isn't it interesting? We, we heard just talk about Brandon Merriweather as a second teamer being well schooled. And they try to fake and come back. And he was in perfect position. That's a nice play by Merriweather. First mistake I've seen Rashard Marshall, Rashid yeah. Marshall make tonight, throwing the ball back yeah. into traffic, giving Merriweather time to get over. This play is stopped at the line of scrimmage for a penalty. West Virginia is trying to do with its punt game what it does on offense. Sometimes go fast, sometimes go slow, do the rugby punt. Just try to keep Miami off balance to negate some of the speed. Prior to the snap, fast start, offense. Five-yard penalty remains fourth down. When you have to use smoke and mirrors, sometimes <laughs> the smoke can't be seen in the mirror. Well, remember one thing. Old Roscoe Parrish touched it the last time. He made that exciting play. Remember you called up Mike? You said he thought he was going twice? I think he thought he was playing high school ball. He ran back and forth and back and forth almost. He's right. Twice he got loose. Had a big run against Boston College. Kick is away. There he goes. Hang time is nice. Harris pedaling at the 36. Made two men miss. Needs to pick up another block. Blocked down at the 48 yard line. Ike <laughs> Johnson, reserve fullback, made the tackle. 50 yard punt, return of 12. Winslow and Miami come back on the field with an attitude after this. Nothing cool about this night in South Florida. There's humidity in the air and tension brought by West Virginia showing up with an attitude. A Miami team perhaps, and you can never measure this with great certainty, looking ahead to the Florida State game next week. Big favorite. Sees two stars go down with knee injuries, one on each side of the ball. Now being pushed by the Mountaineers. First counter for Tyrone Moss, a true freshman at a Pompano Beach. Unable to get back 
to the line of scrimmage. He lost a yard. Well, the last drive, they were able to get Kellen Winslow more involved in the passing game and running the football out of the eye. kind of opened it up, but a lot of it had to do with Winslow picking up some blocks here. Of course, we're very critical of him and his emotions. He needs to control that. He's trying to spark his team. And you hit Kellen Winslow on the run. He's going to do some great things for you. And he's, his battle with Adam Jones continues. That's something to watch here the rest of this game. Number nine, 5'10", 190 pounds, Adam Jones has held his own against Kellen Winslow. Winslow only had 15 catches in the first four Miami games. Second, and a long ten. Off the hands of Jason Gathers, an incomplete, almost a gimme INT for Alex Lake. Scott Junko with the pressure. Kirk, you talked about number nine in white that Larry Coker's tight end has been going up against Adam Jones. He's a sophomore out of College Park, Georgia. Earned the starting spot tonight as Brian King moved from corner to safety. He grew up in the projects of uh, the Atlanta area. Very tough up where you saw his dad killed at age nine. He has grown up around very tough circumstances and that has toughened and hardened this young man. He's not afraid to step back from a challenge. He has made mistakes getting in bar fights and things like that. He does bring an attitude of strength on the field. He's working against Ryan Moore now. Moore breaks free and picks up the first down. Moore was covered initially but broke back to the ball and able to pick up 11 yards in the first down. Jared Payton did a good job of picking up the blitz from the outside and allowing Rock Berlin to step forward. That was a good block by Peyton, and if he hadn't made that block, I'm sure he would have been sacked. Berlin would have. You know, it's he had interesting thing, Kirk. That experience with Peyton blocking is probably the reason why that freshman Moss is not in there right now. Yep, especially in pass protection situations. But he was blocking one of the best linebackers there in the Big East, and Grant Wiley. First and ten, Miami. Five minutes left, third quarter, and they only lead by three. Berlin's throw, caught by Paris, who got double bang there. Jones said the ball came out as he and Grant Wiley combined on the hit. That's a good nine-yard pickup. Let's go down to Doc Punch. Guys, we call Adam Jones Pac-Man all night long, and you wonder why he got the name Pac-Man. I asked him today at the hotel. He said his mom gave him that name because when he was a baby, he would munch down on the nipple like the little Pac-Man character you see munching down on the, whatever he's going against. And he asked his mom, he said, did you have to continuously buy new bottles of nipple for me? She said, no, I was breastfeeding, but I did spend a lot of money, though, on ice packs. <laughs> Ow. Ooh. That's killed him with inside that's, stuff. That's, that's, that is really a little bit too much of that. <laughs> Biocobia. Oh, keep that one to the doctor's right, office. Doctor's office. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> Third reception of the year for the backup fullback out of Lakeland, Florida. Oh, go, fella. Uh, <laughs> get some good stories here in college oh, football. Yeah. Oh, Remember when Miami talked about the thing that de the defenses they're facing this year are doing differently is they're, they're playing much more zone and basically giving the underneath stuff away. Allowing Brock Berlin, hey, take the eight-yard throw, take the ten-yard throw. And we're getting, we're seeing it tonight. West Virginia trying to keep everything in front of them, making Miami show patience and driving the field. Great out of the drive. We go back to the freshman running back, Moss, and he is tripped up. Who did that to Miami successfully? Ohio State? Well, I think Ohio State had a, a, a package that was not only zoned, but I think they challenged Miami with some blitzing and some man-to-man -man situations. I think they really surprised Miami with their athletic ability. And when when you do have some athletes and you have something that you've seen works against this offense, that blueprint, it's what the NFL guys talk about all the time. Once it's out there, oh, yeah. somebody sees how to slow oh, yeah. you down. Yep. You know. See, they played it. Ohio State did a lot of zone blitzing. Boston College has had some success. Yes. They've done some zone blitzing. Second and nine from the 26. That's a blitz. Berlin is flushed and he's brought down. He was out of the tackle box as he was on the way down. The pressure came from Kevin McClee, the redshirt freshman. The only question I have is did that ball pass the line of scrimmage? as he threw it. Otherwise, it would have been pass or fear or uh, intentional grounding. Well, look at the defensive backs as we talk about all the great zone. Anytime you see a corner walked up like that with his shoulders parallel to the line of scrimmage, that's man-to-man. -man. And when you play man-to-man, -man, chances are they're going to bring the blitz. That time, they were able to get through the pass protection and, and get to uh, Berlin. Very close. I don't know, Mike. Could you tell there? Well, two-yard shot. Yeah. It, it's got to get to the X. That's why that X is there at the 26. Third and nine. 
Different look, more pressure. Here comes McClee again, chasing Berlin again. His toss is incomplete. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. Joel Rodriguez. Yeah. Yeah. The center who was down there. That was because it was a screen. Yep. Yep. They try to throw a screen against a blitz, which is a very good call, but Peyton got knocked down and couldn't get into the screen area, and therefore that left Berlin out there with the ball with no screen. Now keep your eye on Jared Payton. He, this is a perfect call against the screen, but 34 gets knocked down as he's setting up the screen to the right of your picture. Watch, boom, he gets knocked down, that's it. There's your screen, it, it man, plays over. and it's all over. Even if you throw it at this point, you have uh, Chris Myers 15 yards downfield blocking. And I saw, a I saw the ball hit an arm, and I wasn't sure who it hit. Because if it would have hit the center, Rodriguez, it would have been an eligible receiver downfield. The first touch for the lineman, but it was not. The 43-yard field goal coming up here will be a career-long attempt for John Petty. The play was stopped momentarily because the official call timeout for a cramp with Kevin McClee and Grant Wiley both coming off the field. West Virginia's got to be careful, make sure they have enough right. players out there, and now they run on an 11. The reason they're giving this opportunity to, the officials stop the game for injury. And a long field like goal like this is sometimes blocked because he don't, doesn't get it up high enough in the middle. And as you said, field goals and defense become huge late in the game like this. From 43, Penny is good. John Petty continues to impress. As a redshirt freshman kicker out of Clearwater, he has made three field goals here tonight. It's eight of nine on the season. And Miami leads by six. Rich Rodriguez's offense has not been able to pull off the number of plays they did in the first quarter, and Miami starting to win the time of possession and play advantage by a strong amount here. Well, on this uh, October evening here in Miami, one of America's most recognized corporate images, the Goodyear Blimp Stars and Stripes, floating overhead, providing our aerial views. Goodyear Blimp, a familiar sight in the American sky since 1925. Thank you for the pictures here this evening. Great sport. A great sports weekend here in Miami with the Canes at home tonight and the Florida Marlins tomorrow and Saturday. The Major League Baseball National League Division Series Game 3 on ESPN 2 at 4 Eastern. Mark Redman against Kirk Reeder tomorrow at Pro Player Stadium. Look at you. A.J. Harris kickoff return. Got to the 26-yard line. Roger McIntosh joining Brandon Merriweather on the tackle. Oh, it's a terrific weekend all the way around. It continues with our college football action on Saturday. And in prime time, Casey Clawson and 4-0 Tennessee take on the 2-2 two two Auburn Tigers. You still have the hopes and dreams of doing the job of the Southeastern Conference. College football on ESPN. Every game a must win. And as you know, our prime time games on Saturday night. NFL on Sunday. Available on ESPN HD, which is now available nationwide. First and ten from the 27-yard line. And Steve Marshall's handoff to Wilson is nothing. So Vince Wolfork, who we haven't called much of tonight, and the Miami defense really stiffened against the West Virginia run game here in quarter number three. Speaking of that Auburn, Tennessee guys, our Thursday night mailbag, one of your neighbors, Herbie, Jeff in Columbus wants to know, take on Auburn, Tennessee guys, do the Vols have a chance to run the table if they win? That's a tough question after the way they played against South Carolina at home last week. I think whichever quarterback plays better in that game wins the game. Casey Campbell, Casey Clawson. Whoever executes better wins that game. Second and ten. Wilson, right side, found a crease and got about seven yards out of it. Also, don't forget, Tennessee's got to play that good Georgia team. And I know Georgia beat LSU when we were at the game, but Georgia's a better football team than LSU. Yep. They just beat themselves. Tennessee, I do not think, can run the table. What was your neighbor's Jeff. name there from Columbus? Jeff. Jeff. Yes, it is Jeff. Jeff, whenever it says at Miami on your sketch, yeah. your chances of running the table are... No, no, no. I disagree with you. I think Tennessee could beat this Miami team. I'm watching the way they look tonight. But they have to come in here and win. But Tennessee, it'll be sold out. It'll be a different atmosphere. Oh. I know. 
Haven't picked up a third down yet tonight, but this is third and three. Most of the third down attempts have been third and long. Marshall will throw. Try to get a lot. It's out of bounds. For Chris Henry. Thomas Carroll came Ooh. off the end and wouldn't let Marshall settle his feet to throw. After starting four of five tonight, the West Virginia quarterbacks two of his last eight. Well, I'll say this about that Tennessee game, so so you don't think I forgot. If they don't have Frank Gore, right, and they don't have the same one in attack I got now, I'm telling you, I'd like Tennessee's chances here, South Beach, or Ethiopia. Well, 53 yards rushing, no matter who they I'm play, it's going to be a challenge for them. They've got to be able to find they, the balance. Quick somebody. job getting rid of it. Great kick to the sideline. Roscoe Paris in the 19. Up the sideline, down to the 29. So after. The rugby punch and a lot of other silly stuff. <laughs> this was some good <laughs> kicking from Todd James. 46 yards on that one. The return of 11. Brock Berlin comes back out at quarterback. You know, uh, Brock Berlin's story has been told so often, but always worth repeating. At the University of Florida, started in the bowl game for Florida, and then transfers away from the Gators. Sits here on the scout team last year. Has the great comeback in the second half against Florida here mm -hmm. and beat his hometown team, Louisiana Tech and Shreveport, to start a Miami career where you just expected to walk in and do it. And we gain an appreciation for how great Ken Dorsey was doing it for four years. Here in the Iron Bowl. For a little to throw. Complete. Up to the 35. Garrett Payton the catch. He picked up five. I think the toughest thing that Brock Berlin has had to adjust to coming from Gainesville is when he played for Steve Spurrier, Coach Spurrier designs a scheme where he just basically tells the quarterback, you throw it to this spot, I've already figured it out, he'll be open, take care of business. Now you come to Miami and it's a completely different offense. Now you have four and five receivers running out on every pattern, but it's from the eye formation in many cases. And it's, it's, a, it's a defense, an offense where you have to be able to read the defense and use your eyes. Whereas at Florida, you relied on Steve Spurrier to do so much of that. In five, good opportunity for Peyton to cross 40 to the 47 yard line, and he picks up the first down. What a story this will develop as uh, the season goes on, depending on how hurt Frank Gore is. If Jared Payton, the son of Walter Payton, is asked to carry the load for Miami. you got to give Carlos Joseph, number 76, and Chris Meyer, number 77, the right offensive guard and tackle. Boy, they just held their blocks hard, Kirk. They stayed with the men. Boom, nice hole there. That was good blocking on the right side by Myers sure and was. Joseph. Opening those uh, holes up, and Mike, it's a really interesting point, depending on how serious Frank Gore's injury is, to see if Jared Payton is going to be asked to become the feature back. The only reason I bring that up is he's fought like crazy in four for four years. He deserves an opportunity, but you have a true freshman behind him in Tyrone Moss and Jason Gathers. In my opinion, by the time this team heads north to Tallahassee, will once again move from wide receiver to tailback to give them more depth at that position. Four fingers up. Off we go to quarter four, and guess what? We have got a game. Miami leads, but only by six. Can they survive in the Orange Bowl? We'll be back to show it to you. Off we go to the fourth quarter on College Football Thursday. Glad you're with us with Lee Corso, Kirk Herbstreet, and Dr. Jerry Punch. Mike Tirico, West Virginia. As much as a four-touchdown underdog in this game, grabbed the early lead, took the tone to a Miami team perhaps looking ahead to Florida State. Miami's lost most sites their safety Frank Gore they're running back to knee injuries if they've wrestled control back in the third start the fourth with a lead Brock Berlin to Kellen Winslow oh he ran over his man to get to the 36 he knocks Scott Jericho through the orange bowl turf 14 yards uh, I, I don't think anybody's ever going to question what kind of football player Kellen Winslow is he's gotten so physical this year look at this Jerko, just hold on, buddy. Ah. Oh. And, and you know one thing I liked about it? He just turned around and walked back like I do that all the time. That's the way to do it. Uh, he's, 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 okay. He doesn't have to talk to anybody. He's, oh my God. he's talking now. Oh, my God. <laughs> Jerko's okay. He's back. He's trying to get in there and make a play on Peyton. He goes to the other side and gets to the 33-yard line. Huh. And a flag is down. 
as West Virginia got involved after the play. Ben Lynch, the nose guard, pushing Quatrin Hill. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness on the defense. 15 yard penalty, first down. That's almost like sticking up for your team, and we're not going to take this, and we're going to show you that we can hang with you, but you've got to do it with intelligence. Let's see, Scott Jerko's okay. He's a kid who uh, walked on at West Virginia and earned his place with hard nosed play. But boy, did he get pounded there. If you're going to come, I appreciate the effort. If you're going to come after 81 green, you got to come luck. You might, you might want to come up. Also, I, I like one thing about Rich Rodriguez that time. <laughs> that that guy, Ben Lynch, made a stupid play. Yep. He calls him over there True. and talks to him. I like that. Bring him out of the game and talk to him what he did wrong. Ryan Moore and Sonaris Moss, the brother of Santana Moss, in the lineup. Here's Peyton left side across the 15 and 2. The 14 yard line, a pickup of about five. Well, Kirk, you were mentioning it earlier that the road that Jared Payton has had to this senior season, being the backup and being in position behind Frank Gore. Look, his father Walter passed away, as we had documented earlier, as everybody knows, after the liver disease led to cancer. Ankle sprain 2000, he redshirted, stepped on Coro, his foot was infected, ineffective in 2001. In 2002, a car accident thrown from a car. Uh, lucky to walk away with just back injuries and limited to 50 carries in mostly garbage time. Feature roll tonight as Peyton is shoved out of bounds after a gain of about a yard. You know, Jared Peyton, of course, hanging around with his dad around the Chicago Bears days. Well, on the other side, the best running back for West Virginia, Quincy Wilson, his dad, Otis Wilson, teammate of Walter Peyton on those Super Bowl teams. And Quincy Wilton, Otis's son, and Jared Payton were the two good football players, the same age, and they hung out all the time. And I talked to Quincy. I said, you talk to Jared? He said, every weekend, man, except for this. I didn't talk to him all week. I'll see him after the game, give him a big hug. He has such respect for what Jared's had to go through here and the course he's had to follow to stay in position. Never sulk. Tonight, stepping into a big role. Picks up the block for Berlin, whose throw is nearly intercepted by Adam Jones. Ooh. Either Winslow ran the wrong route, or Brock Berlin didn't know where to throw the ball because he threw the ball to a spot, and Kellen Winslow went deep in the corner, and he threw the ball short. And did you see, Ber see Winslow yeah. just kind of point to himself a yeah. little bit there? Yeah, you could, yeah. you could see both Winslow looking at himself and also Brock Berlin kind of standing after he threw it, looking at Kellen Winslow saying, uh-oh, got to get on the same page. John Petty's made all three of his field goals tonight. This a 31-yarder to make it a two-score game. And strong freshman kicker here for Miami. The old coach called it. He said third quarter. Looked at it and said, dude, defensive field goal game. Miami three field goals here in the second half. Thank you. You know what? You're all right. Well, I like hanging out with the Sunshine Scooter. 19-10, Canes by nine. Glad you joined us on College Football Thursday. Another enjoyable football night in the Orange Bowl. How many great nights is this old building? I mean, the place is in need of a severe upgrade. But it is Hurricanes football. I'm so glad to hear Paul D, the athletic director, and the folks continue to work so that the right things are done between the city and the university, whatever needs to be done, to make sure Miami football is played here. It's great. It doesn't belong north up in Pro Play. No way. way. There is a special attitude and feel that is uh, so unique about this place, that which has hosted five Super Bowls and a dozen college championship deciding games. Turn here for Jason Colson across the 30 and out to the 35 yard line. 34 on the return for Colson. Let's go visit with Dr. Jerry Punch. Guys, take a look at Quincy Wilson's waist now. Right in front of his waist there, you see that black band that he's wearing? That is a wristband or a wrist coach, and he was sent to him by his high school coach, Brad Cassell. 
uh, out of Winterville, Ohio. That band was worn last Friday night by young man Ricky Bell, who was a quarterback and defensive back. Bell was injured, suffered a fracture in the neck and some paralysis last Friday night. He is wearing that band to tell Ricky to get well soon. The entire Mountaineer team thinking about a young man down in Winterville, Ohio. Ohio right on the West Virginia border. So many uh, ties to the state. Thanks, Doc. A little reverse here in the hands of Travis Garvin. Who is upended at the 39, a pickup of four. Sean Taylor there on the hit. You know Garvin's going to touch it if you're a Miami player. They're well-schooled. Garvin's run seven reverses this season, four of them in one game and in his career, 14 carries. This game right now has a feel that it's over. You know, you're up nine points, 12 and a half minutes to go, but Rashid Marshall has the ability to score and score in a hurry. In fact, this offense is built for these kind of situations when you need to come back and put points on the board. Four is a good first down pickup. Second and six. Miami brings the backers. Marshall up top into double coverage. Is that caught? Spectacular grab by Chris Henry at the 23. 38 yards on the play. Six foot four, Kirk, 200 pounds. Watch him get up. The pass was perfect. You just said yep. this offense was built for it. Watch this play. He goes, this goes to the inside, beats Kelly Jennings. Merriweather's got to get back. They had a cover two safety look. He's got to be able to get back. But that time, Chris Henry, using his size, at six, four and a half, goes up and makes the catch. But number 19, the backup, Brandon Matthew with Merriweather, has to get back in order to prevent that big play. Again, the starter, Murray Sykes, out with the knee injury from the 23. Wilson, four to the 19-yard line. Darryl McClover and Javon Nanton in on the tackle. Remember Brian Pata, the backup defensive end who was starting because of an injury tonight. He went out with an ankle injury earlier. So Nanton, essentially the third-string defensive end, is in for the Canes. Remember in the pregame show I mentioned about if they can get him into the fourth quarter, yep. the pressure goes on number two Miami. Maybe and never know. Walk, no. walk on John Pennington is in the game in the slot. It's a run with Wilson, a quick hitter, and it just didn't find that seam in there. No game. We're going to have third down coming up. A field goal is very important because it's a nine point game. Reminder that Sports Center comes up next. Highlights and reaction game two as the Athletics took on the Red Sox in Oakland. Kobe Bryant in the Lakers training camp, and we'll talk about Nebraska as well coming up. Sports center. West Virginia has not converted a third down tonight. Their eighth try. Great clock as you see down at nine. So time to adjust it for Marshall. Here comes the pressure. Marshall releases. Almost intercepted by Merriweather. Second time he's had it in his hands and can't pull it away. A field goal from here is 36 yards and would make it a six-point game. That was a wonderful call by Randy Shannon, the defensive coordinator. It's the first time they brought a safety on a blitz, and he almost got to Marshall, but he caused him to throw the ball fast. Nice call. You're right by Randy Shannon, defensive coordinator, but also a good feel by Brandon Merriweather, the safety. He just got beat deep. That time he came back, read the eyes of the quarterback, and almost put himself in a position for a long interception return. Huge field goal. He's missed three this season. But he has been strong tonight. Big leg, struggled early, but Brad Cooper has made two field goals. In West Virginia, it's a one-possession game, a one-score game, as we approach 10 minutes in the fourth quarter. Number two is still on the ropes. ESPN's College Football Thursday. Brought to you by the next Ford F-150. Built Ford Tough. And by Under Armour Performance Apparel. The advantage is undeniable. We've played the last 29 minutes and 27 seconds without a touchdown. But it's been a very good field goal kicking night on both sides. Six for six here kicking. Mountaineers within six. Darnell Jenkins has it at the one. That near sideline. West Virginia's special teams have done a good coverage job. James Woodruff made the tackle. Rock Berlin and the Canes will take over from the 27. One stat, Mac, Mike, uh, you and Kirk. West Virginia is only one of two teams to rally 
after trailing in the fourth quarter against Miami in the last 18 years. So all those people are thinking about watching baseball, forget about it. <laughs> Keep watching this game. You never know. Mountaineers did that in 1997. Then in 1999, the game that was moved because of the hurricane up to Raleigh, right. East Carolina, came back to beat Miami. The win or lose, West Virginia has shown tremendous, tremendous competitive attitude tonight. Peyton Malone back. Weird in motion. This play is whistled dead. Prior to the snap, fast start, offense, five yard penalty, remains first down. We talked a lot in the last drive about Jared Payton and, and all the adversity he has faced and how he's been able to get through it. Uh, I think one thing next week you'll see Jason Gathers moved into the rotation of tailback. But you know, Jared Payton, forget not only the adversity, the depth, the players that he's, that he's been behind. Yeah. Clinton Portis, Willis McGahee, Frank Gore, you're talking about first round picks, great players in the NFL. He's a great back, but besides the adversity, he's had a lot of, a lot of personnel to try to fight through to get up to the top of the ladder. Peyton gets three out to the 25-yard line. You know, remember what uh, Larry Coker said, which uh, stuck with me? When he came for his recruiting visit, Walter Peyton, who was ill, but Larry didn't know it at the time, didn't come with Walter. Mm -hmm. His mom Another, did. Yeah. And it was kind of that symbol and signal to everyone that Jared Payton was going to have to earn his name on his own and not be Walter's son as he went through this process. And uh, he's really handled the Payton name admirably uh, in a big microscope under the most difficult and heartbreaking circumstances. Second and 12. Here he is on the screen, and Adam Jones has been everywhere tonight. Loss of three. Third and 15 coming up. I've been really impressed. I think we all have been really impressed with Adam Jones and his attitude. This time he read the screen before anybody else, before the offensive lineman had a chance to get out in front of the running back as he made the catch. Jones was reading the screen and came up right in front of the offensive line to make the big play. It's interesting here. It's third down and 14. This is a perfect spot for a turnover. Because if a quarterback tries to push the ball into a spot where he isn't, right. well then, uh-oh, and you've got yourself a real problem. And Miami forced to take a timeout. First timeout taking this half. Third and long coming up for Miami right after this. <laughs> Another on-time arrival. Have a chair ready for Coach Corso tomorrow morning. 6.30, ready to depart. We're going to send you to Bristol and Sports Center as soon as we're done. Recap of both American League playoff games. Kobe, a camp no-show out in Hawaii. And uh, the guys will break down college football, talking Nebraska, team we saw last college football Thursday. Sports Center comes up as soon as we are done. There's a lot still to do. Number right. two, Miami, third and long, leading by six. Brings pressure, Berlin throws, it is nearly intercepted. I say nothing. Mike Lorello I say nothing. went up to get it, and during the break, that's exactly what you were talking about. Thank you, sweetheart. That's exactly my heart. Well, it's a perfect position for a quarterback. Try to make a big play in his own and lose the game. I don't know about trying to make a big play. If he makes the throw, that's sweetheart, a, that's, I'm, it, I'm just saying, the guy had him beat by five yards. I know that. But he well, you want to run the ball on third down? No, yeah, and punt it. Okay. But not throw the ball in the other team's don't, hands. Don't, don't attack on offense. You want to just be conservative and run the ball and punt? 19-3, to three, I'm not going to throw the ball into the free safety man's hand. 37-yard punt by Monroe. Here's Adam Jones from the 40. Brian McMahon miss. Brought down at the 46 by Antrell Roll. Eight and a half to go, and Leah Miami defense that was embarrassed in the first oh. quarter and has really shown up here in the uh, second half. Well, Randy Shannon right there, the defensive coordinator. We're, you know, we're always talking about identifying minority candidates for head coaching jobs in college. There is one gentleman who is intelligent, on and off the field. He's a quality human being. He won the Frank Royals Award in 2001 as the best 
defensive, or excuse me, the best assistant coach in the nation. Yep. That guy deserves to be and get a shot as a head football coach in college soon. He, he will. Minority or not, he is just That's a great, right. great candidate for somebody out there. 47-year-old Randy Shannon in his defense now trying to keep Miami's title dreams alive. Rasheed Marshall's on the run across midfield. And he takes the best field position of the night for the Mountaineers to start a drive and adds to it with a 10-yard first down run. Just a running ability of Rasheed Marshall. West Virginia trying to give a goodbye kiss to Miami as a Big East dancing partner. <laughs> Miami's won 25 in a row in the conference, 36 regular season games in a row, and 24 in a row here in the OB. Close the streaks on the line in the last half of the fourth quarter. First and ten, Quincy Wilson. Able to get the corner on DJ Williams, gain of about two yards. I mentioned it at the very top, if you weren't with us, when Mel Kuyper starts to look at who's going to be drafted in the NFL draft next year, he looks at only the seniors because it's unfair and unethical to look right. at junior college or juniors who may be coming out of college. On Mel's board, number two, seniors right there, number 17. Number one, guy you're going to see this weekend, Roy Williams, the Texas wide receiver. Roy Williams has been number one, I think, <laughs> on Mel's board for four years. <laughs> He's finally gone out of after this year. Second and eight, Orange Bowl starting to liven up a little bit, trying to support the Miami defense. But West Virginia's going to the open end, which will help them in this quarter if they get close. Marshall Crusher, first sack of the night by Orrin Harris. Orrin Harris, number 92, from Newark, New York. Delaware did the swim technique Kirk and Mike what he does is he hits the guy and he does like a swim which he moves around and pulls the guy watch him keep your eye on right there a number 92 see him hit him and then he uses what they call a swim technique which is to get inside and go after the quarter that's a major league sack right there boy. building comes alive on third and 15 West Virginia hasn't picked up a third down yet Four in the pattern. Now the releasing fifth is the back Wilson to the 42. We'll have to punch it away. Jonathan Vilma made the tackle. We'll be inside six minutes. I know we like to first guess in these situations. He already called for the punt. And I, you know, with the way their defense is playing right now, pin Miami back there and let the defense come oh, out and try to get the football back, maybe get a turnover like you were talking about. Well, as I mentioned, the fact is, with the score 19 to 13 in the fourth quarter, the pressure's on number two Miami, not on West Virginia. Good at pinning the opponent inside the 20 this year. It bounces. Oh, it missed by a half yard. That was a terrific kick. Great kick. Todd James, good kicker. 42 the punt, 22 the net. Wow. Some, big, oh. some great kicks to see Rich Sands. Special teams, night. Oh. I like that. Huh? Love it. College game day built by the Home Depot. Live from Austin, Texas at 10.30 a.m. Eastern, 7.30 a.m. Pacific. Chris Lee and the coach among the topics, Texas and that always hovering topic of getting the big game and winning the big one with Mac Brown. It's another pressure game against Kansas State. They're all big games when you're at Texas. So that's part of the equation as well. But that plus, hey, if you need to know what's going on before you settle in Saturday in your TV room to watch the games, check in with the boys. 10.30 a.m. Eastern, live from us. From the 20, Berlin rolls and throws up by Winslow. First down at the 31. He was smacked by Brian King. See, I, I, I guess you and I differ here. I, I just think that it's real important for them not to pull their horns yeah, in right. right now and get too conservative and just run three sure. times and then punt the ball. I, I understand no. your philosophy. I just think they need to keep I trying need, to attack. I need to bring up a point. It was third down and 13. Yeah. That's the time I didn't want to throw the football because that's the time the quarterback does try to do something stupid and turns the ball over. Not on first 10. Good call there. Not on third and 13. If I get another third and 13, I'm going to run it and then punt it. That's what I do. I'm throwing it. Okay, that's good. <laughs> first and 10 from the 30. With Quad Hill, the fullback leading. Here is Peyton. 
Stay in bounds. He does. Taken down by Brian King and Lance Frazier. Pick up of three. Next snap should take us inside five minutes. Mountaineers full complement of timeouts remaining. And one of the things also I used to try to coach when you get inside five minutes is called tick, 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 tick. Don't do anything to stop that clock because right now you're playing against the clock, not West Virginia. So don't throw a stupid pass where it's incomplete. Make sure you tick, 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 tick. Milk the clock here. If yeah, you're the quarterback, you tick, take tick, it down. Tick. You shouldn't snap it until there's two or one or two seconds left on the play clock. We had a simple thing. We called it tick, 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 tick. That's simple, isn't it? That's easy. <laughs> They leave four on the play clock as Peyton goes forward. Up to about the 39. We're going to have third and a yard and a half coming up here. The penalty marker come in there. The play is blown dead and the clock is stopped. There is the flag. It was under the pile of players. Quadrant Hill coming off. Oh Lost his helmet. Yo. And a holding penalty on Miami. This will be the sixth penalty on Miami. Which is better than the average. They've been averaging about uh, 11 a game, which is second in the nation. Mike. Washington State 11 and a half. Michigan State right behind at 10 and a half. Holding on the offense. 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Repeat second down. Yes, Mike, listen how quiet it is in here. They're nervous. scared. They're scared. They're nervous. Mike, all of those streaks are on the line. It's because the girls are done flashing. That's why it's quiet. Let's get, keep your mind on football. It's the biggest game in the history of this school. What did he say right below us? And they are doing shocked shit. in this place. They are. Especially everybody who gained 24 points. They are really shocked. Oh, uh, I'm calling the Chiefs. That's it. I've had it. What are you Right it's below us. Second and 15 coming up. Orange Bowl. Right. West Virginia's got to think about using its timeout if you get to a third and long situation here. Save some time on the clock. Here's Berlin. Out of the pocket. Check down to Peyton. And he gets hit down. The 38-yard line. He's going to be three shy of the first down, but the clock did stop a pickup of a dozen, and he knows it. Yeah, you can yeah, see him pointing to himself. He, he, you know what? This it's been a long time since he's had to play this this many snaps, and and he looks tired when he's coming on and off the field. Yeah, you know, that's something he's going to have to try to adjust to now. If Frank yeah. Gore is is if his injury is serious, Jared Payton playing a lot of football tonight. This but, humidity, that is a tough. Tough thing to do. Again, if you're just tuning in, Jarrett Payton is in because Frank Gore hurt his knee, and most sites the starting safety hurt his knee for Miami, both in the first half. MRIs tomorrow to determine the severity of the injury. Gigantic play here, third and three. West Virginia blitzes. The throw is complete. First down to the 45 with Kevin Beard. The senior who's also coming back from a torn up knee. Third down and short this time. West Virginia comes with an all-out blitz, probably expecting a run. And Rod Trzynski rolled the dice a little bit. Quick three-step drop to the quick game, and he gets the ball out to Kevin Beard. And boy, they're West Virginia lucky that uh, they were able to come back because there was only one defender out there to make that play. Would you throw any more passes? Well, not now, but okay, there were no, not, no, there was no, nine no, minutes no, left. I just asked yeah, a question. Not now. Thank you. It's, it's two, two hands on the football. Ball. Two hands. Tick, 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 tick. Stay in bounds. Oh, <laughs> big Ken Woody and Bo stuff, huh? Yep. Two hands on the ball. The ball came out. out. It did come out. It's Peyton Kelly. And West Virginia has it. I think Adam Jones came away with it. On the 22nd carry, a career high for Peyton. He had 20 carries against Rutgers four years ago when he was a freshman. The ball came free, and the Mountaineers have it at the Miami 48. And buckle up. Here we go. That's why I said tick, 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 two oh. hands on the well, football. It's... You don't run the ball with one hand on the football no. when you're trying to tick, tick, tick. Real it. quick. You don't want to throw. You don't want to run. You don't want to run. Two hands on the football. Grant Wiley. Grant Wiley forced the fumble. Sixth the hit. forced fumble this year. Leads the Big East, tied for the lead in the nation. Quincy Wilson. Forward to the 45, pick up of three. Inside of three and a half to go. Where should West Virginia be going offensively here, guys, as they try to stun number two Miami? Well, I wouldn't run it anymore, because that way you're running. Look at the clock. 
Your well, clock is dying. I still think with this team, because of the way they can strike quickly, you're okay in, in red out to run the football, but you got to put the game in the hands of the quarterback, Rasheed Marshall, running and throwing and doing different things. Miami plays a lot of man under. Great opportunity with crossing routes and trying to get Marshall out some freedom to throw the football. He looked to the sideline, adjusted the play to option. He keeps up the middle to the 35 and still going down to the 30-yard line. Antrell Rowe made the tackle. They look to the sideline to adjust the play, and 15 yards later, they're in business. Well, they went with a freeze call early to find out what kind of coverage. Man coverage, what's a great call? An option. An option coming right down the line and putting a little bit of a fake on Nanton, number 57, and cutting right underneath. He looked very explosive for a quarterback who's been playing four quarters. West Virginia looking for its biggest win in terms of beating a ranked opponent ever. First and ten, two and a half to go. Marshall pulls it out, eludes the rush, loads up, takes off, and gets out of bounds. May have lost the yard, second down ahead. West Virginia in 1993, part of a perfect season, beat number four Miami, 17 to 14. Here they're playing number two Miami in the Orange Bowl with all Miami streaks on the line. 36 months and 36 regular season games since the Canes last lost a scheduled contest. After a loss of three, second and 13. Pressure coming. Wide open is Harris. He couldn't get it with the timing. KJ Harris hit a big play on a wheel route earlier tonight. He would have taken it deep into the red zone if the quarterback just would have given you a little more air. That was a great call by Rich I was at that say. time. He went back to the play. They scored a touchdown. On. What a great call. But this time, a little bit of different window dressing. He has two backs from the shotgun. He slides them both off to the left. And I, he just threw it a little bit early to Harris. Or he had it again right down that same sideline. Confusion. Miami is confused on defense. Sports center coming up. You're in four-down territory. You don't need to run a 15-yard play here. Correct. Third and 13. For it on fourth down. Screen, works it. Good luck. Oh, he got a great play. Down the sideline, first down and more. Is he still going? Touchdown! An unbelievable run. They're an extra point from the lead. The son of Chicago Bears linebacker Otis Wilson. Second year, Nigga. Has shocked everyone. Quincy Wilson, 33 yard touchdown after Jared Payton's fumble. Two guys who grew up together. Now, a huge extra point. Brad Cooper's missed two of them. This to put West Virginia on top. The West Virginia Mountaineers in the Orange Bowl. A four touchdown underdog lead Miami 20 to 19. Quincy Wilson, what second effort, what determination. He's run for nearly 100 yards tonight. He beat Vince Wolford, one of the best D tackles in the country. One of the best safeties in Sean Taylor. Got down the sideline, delivered the blow to Merriweather, smelled the end zone. And now the Mountaineers are two minutes away from one of the biggest wins in the history of West Virginia football. The West Virginia Mountaineers lost to Maryland last game, 34-7. They had no business being in this game tonight. They're two minutes away from one of the biggest wins in Mountaineer history and stopping Miami's 36-game regular season win streak. 25-game Big East win streak and 24 in a row in the Orange Bowl. And it falls on Brock Berlin and Winslow and all the other guys because Quincy Wilson and company came to play here tonight. Short kickoff to try to negate a return. But it will give them better field position. Darnell Jenkins runs up. 
finds a crease, gets to the 37, a marker is down. Check the flag. Be a huge penalty here. We call the hold from the spot, so Miami will probably start somewhere inside its own 30. Holding during the return. 10-yard penalty from the end of the play. First down. The end of the play in the spot were the same. They'll be at the 28. Guys, the touchdown. Well, this is a heck of an effort, an individual effort initially by Quincy Wilson. It's a screen setup. Watch him avoid big Vince Wilfork. Outruns Thomas Carroll. Gets some good blocks. Look at that block right there by Dan Moses, number 76. And it goes right over top of the young safety, Brandon Mer Merriweather. Unbelievable determination there by Quincy remember, Wilson. Remember, number 19 Merriweather's in there at 175 because Mo Sykes, number 36, is hurt at 205 times. Maybe if Mo Mo was there, he would have knocked him down. Miami has two timeouts. They need about 40 yards for a 50-yard attempt. John Petty, their kicker, has that kind of length. He hit a 57-yarder in high school. But first, it's on Brock Berlin, the quarterback. He is pressured by Riley, who was held. So this play will come back. Nice run by Berlin, but holding back at the spot. Miami's going to be back inside its own 20. And remember, the time ran off the clock as well. Remember we talked about the Larry Coker, and he said what's getting us killed is mistakes and penalties. Well, here it comes. Well, costly penalties at, at very important times. That time, I, Jared Payton, fatigue is set in at this point for him. He's made some, some silly mistakes here these last couple series. That time, hooking Grant Wiley for a hold. It's been, it's, it's been the thing that's held them back themselves. Yep, every time. Here you see Miami's penalty numbers. Not the volume, but significant time penalties here tonight. Guys, let's not forget a minute 46. Brock Berlin. This is where he is shown that he is very comfortable in sitting back in the pocket in the shotgun, working the two minute. All they need is to get in the field goal range with two timeouts. Plenty of time. Adam Lenort, one of the starting linebackers, getting fluid. So West Virginia doesn't have its best personnel on the field. Berlin is pressured. Here's the screen with Peyton. Cut down at the 20. Adam Jones has been everywhere tonight. Gain of three. The clock runs. Miami has two timeouts and a buck 30 to go. And their pace has to be much more urgent than it is here. That's on the quarterback. He's got to get them going. He's got to pick up the pace, get people lined up, and get the play called. West Virginia, just a three-man rush. That's what they normally play, a 3-3-5. Three, three, Berlin looking, it's Peyton again, check down, only to the 23, they need a timeout, they need a timeout, they have it, with 1.10 to go. Frustration here, I couldn't see downfield, didn't look like it was much open, but we've got a buck 10 left, and Miami's facing third down, and about 14 yards. One thing I learned a long time ago is it's, it's very easy to sit up here and to find open receivers and to right. say, geez, why can't he throw right. it here? Like, he had open people downfield. I think right now he's in a situation where he's trying to get the ball thrown. I think he's, he's feeling a little bit of jitters back in that pocket because these plays are taking a little bit of time to develop. Miami lost this football game in the practice field this week, getting ready for Florida State, thinking about Florida State. We said at the beginning of the game, and I mentioned to you, you they don't look like Miami, and I said before in the opening, they bring their B game tonight offensively, and they could lose this football game they brought their B game but the coaches tried they yeah. had a sense of it they tried to get Miami ready yeah but you know where they don't get them ready when they leave the practice field when they go to the dorms and they see their girlfriends and they talking yeah. about Florida State and this and that they were not ready to play tonight but right? you know of, of all the teams out there all the teams the last two or three years who've been able to avoid those kind of games in most cases it's been Larry Coker's Miami Hurricanes you know why one reason in my opinion Ken Dorsey yep but if you talk to players They'll tell you not just Ken Dorsey, yeah, but probably. the legacy of senior classes handed down from one group to the next to the next. Not just the coaches and an individual like yeah, Ken Dorsey, but the group of players not I mean, letting the underclassmen take away. I was, I was here against the Florida State team. He took it to Lincoln yeah. Field and beat Florida State. Remember that? Yeah. Yeah. Remember that, yeah, guys. Four cool. down territory. <laughs> Four down territory. So you don't need all 13 here. You're going to be going for it on fourth down. Time and huge factor. West Virginia's bailing. They should have people open. Peyton, short, couldn't get to it. And now it's fourth down. 
And it's fourth and 13, and the Mountaineer sideline is sensitive. And it's Christmas Eve on the Mountaineer sideline. They see Santa coming down the chimney, and they are one play away from as big a present as Rich Rodriguez and the state of West Virginia's ever had. But he's not going to bring coal. Uh -huh. Santa Claus not bringing coal to West if, Virginia. If West Virginia continues to play this defense with their corners soft, Miami could easily run a 15-yard just outcut, just a simple outcut to the top of the screen and pick up the first down. 36 regular season wins, 25 in a row in the Big East, 24 in a row in the Orange Bowl. They've got to pick up fourth and 13. Colin throws, caught by the Three. One minute left. They're still alive. They need about 20 yards to get the field goal range. Oh my gosh! Are you kidding me? Unbelievable effort by Kellen Winslow to go up, turn his body, and then lean across for the first down. From the 43, one timeout remaining. Rushing three. Eight cover for the Mountaineers. Peyton out of the backfield to the 41-yard line. First down, clock stops to move the chain. From here, it's a 58-yard field goal. They need about 10 more. Underneath route this time, he hits Jared Payton in stride, allowing Payton to get upfield and not only pick up a first down, but pick up valuable yardage. Every yard at this point is key to get into field goal range. But the key that time was very good offensive line protection. Twice they've given him time. First and 10. Berlin looking for Ryan Moore. It's caught. It'll mark him at the 33. The clock stays moving. Miami's going to use its final timeout here with 25 seconds to go. <laughs> From here, the field goal is about 50 yards. From here, the rules change. Mm -hmm. The rules change when you have no timeouts and you're trying to get into field goal range. There's one thing also as a coaching point with 25 seconds to go in a ball game. You sometimes kick it on third down, so if there's a bad snap, you can try to get the ball off, but you don't usually. It's a tough situation, but I would definitely throw the ball to 81 oh, somewhere. He's at a 49-yard field goal right now with the ball to 32. Still needs probably, what do you think, another 7 to 10 yards to get comfortable. Comfortable. John Petty out of high school. I mentioned he kicked a 57-yarder. One of the things he did well was kick pressure kicks. His high school coach described him as a great pressure kicker. He kicked a game time 57 yarder to send the game into overtime after making a 51 yarder earlier in the game. He has the leg, but the pressure involved here is far greater than Clearwater playing countryside in high school. Well, the strategy here, obviously, if you're going to win the football game, is try, if you can, to get the ball to your best players. And obviously, your best player is number 81. Or don't be, uh, don't be afraid to get the ball to that old Roscoe Parrish and let him do it. Uh, boom. Now, uh, here's the, the most important yeah. thing, if they're going to throw here on second and one, is you cannot take a sack. Yep. You cannot take a sack. And that's probably the last thing they told Brock Berlin. Without a timeout. Second and one for Berlin. They will throw it. Waiting for somebody to clear. He comes back to Kevin Beard. He's out of bounds at the 22-yard line. From here, the field goal is 39. It's first down. And everybody's getting on the same yes. page now. You still have a chance to run the football to get it into the middle of the field and then fire it into the ground. There's one still thing. enough time to do that. Also, one time I lost a football game once like this when I completed a pass. The guy got hit and dropped the ball and they recovered. Make sure the guy that catches the football goes right down. Don't try to make the touchdown, sweetheart. Right. Just fall down and kick the field goal by spiking it. Good point on the spike. Firing into the ground. Ryan Moore and Kevin Beard top of the screen. Bottom of the screen, Roscoe Parrish. Winslow, the tight end, is on that side. They're out of the gun. Peyton next to Berlin. West Virginia brings heat. Berlin's throw is incomplete. Penalty marker for pass interference. It will bring it a lot closer. Rashid Marshall can't bear to watch. He's looking the other way. The West Virginia quarterback who's been booed at home and led an unbelievable effort here tonight. Pass interference on the defense. 
15 yard penalty from the line of scrimmage. First down. I want to bring up a very important point. They're going to kick now from yes. the six yard line. You know why? Because Brock Berlin threw an interception in the right hand corner just before halftime. Yep. Remember? I'd kick it now because there's 14 seconds to go. But also a very good point here. Yeah, they're going to freeze the kicker. I'm just going to say. Rich Rodriguez will take time out. John Petty will have a chance to think about his fifth field goal attempt of the night. One that would survive Miami ahead. Now let's go back to some big plays yeah. on this drive. Uh, the, the catch by Kellen Winslow. I think well, Hurricane fans will go back and remember that play for a long time. If they make this field goal, that catch <laughs> saved Miami Hurricanes' undefeated season up to this point if they hit the field goal. Unbelievable night for Kellen Winslow and a catch to put that exclamation point behind that uh, performance. A breakout night. He's had only 15 catches in his first four games this year. And as I told you, he told me how frustrated he was that this season wasn't getting off to the start he had hoped for. One more point that maybe people forgot. That was fourth down. Yes, I know. No, it was fourth and 13. <laughs> it wasn't like, yo. We're going to have an even further delay as someone came onto the field. Don't I, don't know if it, I don't know if it was a Miami fan, but... The problem is, it freezes Miami's players even more. Now, somebody else has come on the field. Another Miami fan out of the student section as well. And the Miami police uh, all over the Orange Bowl trying to quell that situation. But if they're Miami fans, they're, look, they're idiots for running on the field. They're complete morons for trying to hurt their team because now the kicker's got to think about it even longer. They're also... Who, who knows who he's rooting for, but... Wrong town to run onto the field in. <laughs> so they take care of that situation, and now back to the focus at hand, and John Petty, a redshirt freshman, who earned the job this offseason and in summer with his strong leg and consistent kicking. Please mention number 11, Matt Carter, the holder. I just did, because he's important here. Very, in the center. Chris Harvey. Carter. Last time the Harvey. Canes had a gut-wrenching field goal Harvey. attempt, mm -hmm. Todd Seavers put it right through the middle to send the national championship into overtime. That's right. In the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl, Lee, you mentioned Harvey, the snapper. Yeah. He's been the snapper since 2000. Mm. Now West Virginia is going to, hey, you can't take him back to Morgantown with you, so he'll take another timeout. <laughs> All right, let's step out. I think we might get another timeout called by Rodriguez before all is said and done. Pressure field goal when we come back. Back here in the Orange Bowl. Remember, it is first down. So if there's a bad snap, just think back to the San Francisco Giant, uh, San Francisco 49ers, New York Giants playoff game. A bad snap, get rid of it. Right. Throw it away, it. incomplete pass, live to kick another day. For his fifth field goal of the night, which would set a Miami record, Rich Rodriguez will give him one more chance to think about history of an individual and a team type here. He uses all three timeouts. And you know, guys, I, we were talking during the break. I would not have used all these timeouts. Just think back to the Monday night game we saw with the Giants and Dallas Cowboys, where the ball went out of bounds. They were able on the kickoff to advance it. Go down with one quick play yeah. and kick the field goal to send that game to overtime. I would have saved my timeouts, at least one of them, with 14 left. I would have done exactly what he's doing. I'm not second guessing or first guessing him. Right. But now, he, the whole thing is if he misses the field goal, you win the game. But that's what I go on, just pressure that guy. He's a, he's a young kicker, and he's never been in this position. All see right. what he can do. I, 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 I kind of see what you're saying. 14 seconds with this offense. Never know. You get a big return. One that, one, that one, one timeout could come in handy to try to uh, get your own, your own, uh, your own offense yeah. in position to get a field goal. Mention, yep. mention the center, the holder, and the kicker together as a combination. One more time. Chris Harvey is the snapper, okay. and Matt Carter is the holder. Very, very important. 28-yard kick inside the hash. 23 yards for Petty. And here we go. Snap good. Hold good. The kick is good.
snap from Chris Harvey. Perfect. Your hold from Matt Carter. Lisa spun. <laughs> the kick from John Petty. Five kicks in a game for a field goal. Breaks the Miami record. Brock Berlin had to throw it 54 times tonight. He threw one up that Kellen Winslow went up and made an unbelievable playoff. Let's not forget, we've been critical of Brock Berlin, but also he made some big plays there. And here's a young man who had an unbelievable evening leading his team, making them believe after the way they played on offense the last two weeks. And Rich Rodriguez, who dug his team off the ground after they were embarrassed at Maryland, 34 to 7, beaten by a quarterback who transferred from West Virginia and Scott McBride yet able to survive. Still 11 seconds left. Line drive, kickoff, one bounce to K.J. Harris. Across the 20 to the 30 to the 37 yard line with five seconds left. Now, I'm sorry, three seconds as the clock ran just a couple seconds farther. If it was going the other way, I was here when Doug Flutie threw it for a touchdown. But it was going <laughs> to the left, not to the right. And it wasn't 70 yards. It wasn't too far away from where it is here. Man. I'm telling you. I was here, sitting right there. He threw the ball for the midfield into the left end zone. Doug I, bet, Flutie. I bet it went in the air about 70 oh, yards. Oh, it was an unbelievable pass. Sitting right here watching it. Sports Center coming up as soon as we're done here. Uh, quite a night in Miami. Oh. Rodriguez, great effort, outstanding, outstanding, great effort. outstanding effort performance by him and by his team. One play, one try. They need to buy time for the length of throw. That's uh, halfway down the field, the tech in the air, and it's intercepted by Sean Taylor, who goes down and shows the relief for the Canes as Miami has survived. Barely. <laughs> Miami moves to five and zero. Oh. Winslow with a visit for Wilton. Otis Wilton's son, the former great NFL linebacker. I'm sure people were calling that cell phone when they saw his son make what would have been one of the more memorable touchdowns in Mountaineer history. Would have been up there with the heroics of Amos Zaraway and Major Harris of recent Mountaineer days and Hostetler of generations before. But number two Miami escapes and survives. 22 to 20. Our Wrangler player of the game, John Petty, five field goals tonight, including the game winner, his Miami record fifth, keeps the Canes undefeated. We'll see you in a couple of minutes to wrap this baby up on SportsCenter. For Lee Corso, Kirk Herbstreit, Dr. Jerry Punch, and all the women and men on our ESPN College Football Thursday team, this is Mike Tirico. Thanks for watching this presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more college football info, log on to ESPN.com, keyword college football. Good night from the Orange Bowl, where the Kings survived. We'll see you in a minute on the other side of SportsCenter.